Hello, welcome to Truth Sentinel, watching over the truth in the news. Today's date is the 5th of September 2014. Welcome, thanks for your support. Currently still in Southampton, hope to be heading to Ukraine in about 10 days or so. Today's news. Lord Mayor of London Fiona Wolfe has replaced Lady Butler Sloss as head of the UK government inquiry into child abuse. Now, she's a city lawyer and former president of the Law Society. She has no um, prior experience of anything to do with child abuse and she's pretty much part of the establishment. It also seems she may have Masonic links as well. And she's on the same, um, one of the same institutions that Leon Britton, uh, allegedly someone who may be one of the perpetrators uh, of the child abuse that's been under investigation um so that's a bit weird but um let's give it all a chance and see what happens but it looks to me like they're desperately trying to cover it up um but like i said to someone recently only if the public let them get away with it you know we've got to make sure that as many people as possible know about the people involved and don't let them get away with it an estimated one trillion dollars that's 600 billion pounds a year is being taken out of poor countries and millions of lives are lost because of corruption according to campaigners this is a report by the anti-poverty organization one which says that um, a lot of the progress made over the last 20 years in tackling poverty has been uh, put at risk by corruption and crime and it's suggesting basically that people die because all the money doesn't get to the governments and so they can't invest in society. It's nice uh, where they're coming from, but really, I mean, that really does assume that governments are not the worst perpetrators of corruption, which of course they are. People have got to stop thinking the people in power are decent human beings. I mean, it's, be it's beyond a joke now, you know. President Barack Obama has vowed that the US will not be intimidated after Islamic State militants released a video showing the beheading of um, American journalist Stephen Sotlov. And uh, Mr. Obama warned, our reach is long and justice will be served. I mean, I, I love how they use phrases which they think are poetic rather than just saying what they think. This is the major problem with politicians. They just, someone writes their lines for them, they read them out. Uh, it's just... Why can't they just be human and say what they think and say it from the heart? People might like them a bit better, but the fact that they just come out with all this crap all the time, this fake rubbish, you know, it's just nonsense. Occasionally I've seen in some political discussion, you get someone who just starts talk, talking normally, like a normal human being, and they just stand out and actually people start listening to them. Um... Everything most politicians say are just scripted sound bites written by other people. And I can imagine they get kind of briefed on statements that have been released so they know what they've actually said in the past. For example, like they might say, someone might say, you said that you were appalled and alarmed at the death of James Foley, just to remind you. you know. I think um, if we ever are going to change society, we need to change uh, the way politics works completely, the whole system the way politics works, the way media works, and the way and get rid of this soundbite culture. Anyway, uh, let me continue. The UK Prime Minister hinted at laws targeting anyone who does not promote cohesion in society. This is after the beheading. Um, it's quite clear they're going to be bringing in laws which are supposed to tackle terrorists, but um, Cameron was quite clear. He said, not just terrorists. He's saying anyone who doesn't promote cohesion in society. Um, so I, I'm expecting laws coming in soon where everyone has to be careful what they say or they'll be labeled an extremist. It's not, it's really not far away. Another thing I noticed was, um, army recruitment ads, ads on the TV. Um, when when you start seeing recruitment ads on the TV, which I, I you know I don't often see otherwise, you know that they're at, they're planning a war basically. Uh, they know it's going to happen. Uh, they want it to happen. They want to make money. They want to have 
contracts, they want the rebuilding afterwards, all the money they can make. Um, it's all just following a script to, um, to help achieve their agenda. So um, this ceasefire that we um, we also heard of today in Ukraine, I'd like to be optimistic, I really would, and I'm hoping that it will hold because I'm going to Ukraine soon, but I don't think, uh, actually it seems like Putin uh, really does want to avoid this war, but I think the West has already made up its mind, I'm sure they'll, if they have to, they'll create uh, some kind of false flag uh, attempt. And I noticed also again that they keep using this interchangeable ISIS, ISIL, IS, um, just to confuse the situation. Basically also the UK said it's not going to waver in its aim to defeat terrorism. David Cameron's full of all these sound bites and this rubbish, um, so I, I can't take him very seriously anymore. He uses a word actually quite a lot. Uh, he, it seems to be his favourite word. Um, and the word is robust. He says it all the time about everything. Um, you know, if, if it's something that he could possibly use that word, he'll use it. Okay, so basically at Prime Minister Questions, Mr Cameron told MPs that this country will never give in to terrorism and our opposition to ISIL will continue at home and abroad. I mean, ISIS is a threat. I mean, I think there's going to be some terrorist incidents in the UK. It's, uh, I mean, in some ways, why would some of these people travel abroad to Iraq if they really do hate the West so much? They can just cause havoc here. And it's only a matter of time. They know it. Our leaders know it. We know it. Um, I just hope that it could be stopped. I like to be optimistic. And uh, next week we'll be talking about optimism and, and positive thinking. But anyway, let's move on. There's been talk of uh, getting together with Syrian leader Assad. And that just reveals how stupid these people really are. I mean, if we cast our minds back to when they were trying to get us all to fight Assad in Syria... They were t talking about arming and funding the rebels there, the ones that were cutting people's heads off there, ripping their hearts out. And in fact, they did arm and fund them. Al-Qaeda and most of these uh, groups are only groups together in ide ideology more than anything else. So they were effectively switching sides and asking us to fight with Al-Qaeda against Assad. People said no, people saw through it. But some of these groups of these rebels um, with the same ideology and who were funded by the West, moved to Iraq and became ISIS, and now Western powers are thinking they could side with Assad now and fight ex effectively the same people. Um, this is why we're in this confusing mess. We're being lied to all the time. Nobody really knows what's going on. Uh, it's chaos and confusion, and um, I think the next stage is probably a major terrorist attack in the West, which is going to happen. Everyone knows it. Um, nobody trusts our government anymore to protect us. The laws they're bringing in aren't really to protect us, they're to suffocate us and to take away our rights. Anyway, let's just sit back and see what happens. Um, next up for execution is a Briton, um, and I heard a radio presenter saying that what more proof do we need? We need to get in there and attack them. Which might, may be the case, but isn't it all rather strange that we're all reacting to the death of one person when this kind of thing happens all the time? It's a publicity stunt, which which does make people suspicious. When it's a publicity stunt to get people to go to war, you have to question who's behind the publicity stunt. The other thing I find strange is the fact that a Briton's up next. So, okay, well, if they kill a Briton, we're definitely going to war. It just seems crazy to me. So a single case of someone of our nationality would take us into a war. Someone else's nationality doesn't matter. It's all it's all stupid. Uh, it's like someone from our team. It's that team mentality. I've always found the allegiance to countries a bit strange for me, honestly, especially when it comes to people's protection of it. In its most dangerous form of nationalism, it can create wars, feelings of hatred and racism. Um, xenophobia against people from other countries or teams. Rwanda is an example. You had case of people being lined up on a football pitch, ironically, since we're talking about sport, and they just gunned them down row after row uh, because they didn't belong to the right team. Let's move on. 
Ukrainian pro-Russian rebels in the east have signed a truce, uh, as I mentioned, to end almost five months of fighting. They agreed to stop firing um, by three o'clock and it appears to be holding. But the rebels said the truce hasn't changed their policy of advocating splitting from Ukraine, which doesn't sound too promising. Meanwhile, NATO has agreed to form a multinational force capable of deploying within 48 hours. Great, well done NATO, that should really help uh, smooth things over. Also in the week, um, Asha King's uh, parents have been released after being arrested after trying to seek medical treatment abroad, which is now a major sin. If you want to look after your son and daughter and you, want, you actually choose uh, a treatment that's different to the government sanctioned treatment, then you're a criminal. Um, the government are basically showed in this case they consider people's children theirs and um, and what they often do is they'll take away the child from this family that are, are dare to try something different and they put them into social services social services which has has much higher cases of child abuse than if in just living in normal families with their their parents which is where most children should be I mean these people were clearly clearly cared about their their uh, son it should this should never have happened another thing Cameron mentioned in his uh, Prime Minister's questions which I, I found hilarious if it wasn't so sick was that he was suggesting that ministers would be looking into the cases of another child abuse scandal in the UK of, uh, in Rotherham and they would be uh, he would be getting his ministers to conduct a full investigation Okay, will you, will you be using um, the same ministers that are under investigation for child abuse? It's getting crazy. They need to have a full investigation of the ministers about child abuse. Nobody trusts them anymore. I mean, they have brought in this woman, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, but she's clearly going to be looking after the interests of Parliament there. Before we continue, just wanted to talk about a few new features we've added. Uh, voicemail, quite important uh, feature. Uh, voicemail to leave your comments and I can take your MP3 file that you create with your voice and then put it in the show. So we've got like a, a phone-in section basically. Now let me explain where you can find it. If you go onto the channel page, so go to Truth Sentinel channel page, where the... Um, the web links are in the top right corner you'll see the donations button thank you for any donations you'll also see um, a blogger bu uh, button um, if you click on that it'll take you to another page where there's voicemail a chat room I really would ask them um, if you to use this because it'd be great to hear back from you what you think not just me chatting all the time but and not just our guest but you we want I want to hear what you think so if you can just hit the pause button for a second and go and find that so you know where it is. Love to hear your comments. You only have um, one and a half minutes at the moment because that's free for me at the moment with one and a half minute comment. But you'd be surprised how much you can say in one and a half minutes. I'm going to try and lengthen it later if people use it. So um, yeah, if you can, pause, press the pause button. Go and have a look. Make sure you know where that is. Also put comments in the chat room in there that I've created. Uh, comments about what we've said comments uh, questions things you want us to talk about it'd be love to have more interaction you could you know tell us topics you want covered um, what you think of any debates we have we're gonna have a debate next week about positive thinking anyway just to let you know um, the, the address of that page where you can uh, leave your voicemail just in case that helps you truthsentinel9.blogspot.co.uk that's truthsentinel9.blogspot.co.uk That's also a place where our past guests can keep in contact with us as well. If they want to come back on the show because they've got some news to tell us, they can also leave messages on there if any of you guests, past guests are listening to. Last episode we talked with Rosemary Ellen Gulley about uh, dreams, the afterlife, angels, miracles. Today we're going to have um, excerpts from a live link up we did with Pete Wicker from the show Truth is Stranger Than Fiction based in the USA, I think Chicago actually. Um, they, they have some great guests there and um, like uh, Pete says in the recording that I'll be playing uh, shortly, we're not competing against each other, 
because what's more important is the message that we're trying to help spread and um, I think we can all do that basically um, so we're gonna, we had a link up with Pete and we talk about lots of uh, past world events and just discuss them basically I'll give you a bit of background about some of the stuff we talked about um, originally it was going to be Pete interviewing me about the current state of world events and linking them to my travels and life experiences which I mentioned in earlier episodes but uh, just a, a reminder to uh, listeners who may have joined more recently part of the reason I started doing um, the show was I was often caught up in world events as I traveled around the world I was in Phuket Thailand for the Asian tsunami that killed over 230,000 people I arrived literally hours before that tsunami came in and I was I was right near uh, the beach fortunately the water only came up to my hotel but the bar I was in the night before got wiped out um, I used to live in Fukushima for a number of years as well in the Fukushima region and at some point we'll definitely get someone on to talk about that that um, tsunami there which killed almost 20,000 people and caused a meltdown of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant and you know it seems like there may have been a cover-up with that as to how exactly how much pollution that's caused and is still causing some scientists have warned that if another large earthquake or event causes the pool of, of the build-up of radioactive water there to drain uh, the one that's keeping the fuel rods from overheating and igniting it could cause a catastrophic fire releasing 10 times more cesium-137 than was released at Chernobyl just a quick hello to some of the people um, that listen to this show from different countries you know we've got people from the UK, Australia, Canada, Italy, Japan, Netherlands, Germany, New Zealand uh, Ireland, Switzerland, Malaysia, Norway, Cyprus, Philippines Czech Republic, Argentina, Taiwan, France, Bahamas, Mexico, Turkey Bosnia and Herzegovina, Portugal, Costa Rica, Croatia, Ukraine, Belgium, Slovenia and Kenya now that person from Kenya did only listen for nine seconds before switching off but then if I if I was in Kenya I'd probably be out enjoying the amazing nature over there anyway so I don't blame them if you're from another country that I didn't mention please go to the chat room let us know we'd love to know um, about you know where people are listening from anyway let's go to the chat um, me and Pete had Pete from The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction another show there in the in the states let's go and um, I'll play the recording now let us know what you think about some of the topics we mentioned because we cover quite a lot you know if, if while you're listening you, you have a thought about what you think about something just pause the uh, audio and go and write something in the chat room or leave me a voicemail message okay here it is welcome to a special Saturday morning broadcast of the truth is stranger than fiction with uh, me Pete Wickard and my special guest Scott Sendman how's it going Scott hi Pete yeah everything's fine over here the sun's out uh, over here in England I'm uh... yeah it's cold here in Chicago 59 of it it's like what 59 degrees was it October <laughs> oh yeah so we've uh, we've had some up and down weather but yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, first, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show. And honest to God, I, I really appreciate your help and helping support me. And especially from all the way out there in England, and it means the world to me that, you know, my, my efforts are reaching as far as they are, and yours as well. And that's what's so important about uh, the message of basically sharing, you know, uh, we're not trying to compete like the major news outlets we share information and that's the way it should be you know? absolutely um, yeah like you said we're, we're not trying to make money we're not trying to become famous we're just we're trying we're trying to do something again about what's happening in the world and the more of us there are and the more we can get together the, be the better things are gonna be yeah it's like uh, V for Vendetta at the end of the movie I think one day, our, at least here in the United States, it's going to come down to that. There really is. And and will an American soldier shoot? And, uh, I'm going to ask you that question. Would, uh, do you think an American or British soldier would shoot a civilian of their own kind? Like an American shooting an American or would a British shoot a British soldier? 
I think a certain type of person um, would do that, yes. I mean, I don't think it would be impossible to find a, a soldier that would do that, but... Kind of a random question, sorry. Yeah, it, no, no, that's fine. Random questions are good. I think you, I'll, I'll ask you some random questions hey. later. <laughs> <laughs> you owe at least one so far, man. But, uh, yeah, no, again, thanks for coming on, you know, like, and... Uh, I mean, where do we begin in the world? I'd say I'm interested in your take on Ukraine because a couple of weeks ago I predicted that I I think uh, Ukraine had something to do with that plane, the Malaysian plane that got shot down, and that Russia and Putin didn't have much to gain, you know, and neither did the the rebels fighting there. So I'm just going to ask you flat out, who do you think shot down the Malaysian plane? Well, you know, I mean, I can only say what I think, um, but I, I would say, like you said, uh, Putin didn't have anything to gain by it. It just seems like a classic case of the West pin it, trying to pin something on him that didn't oh, happen. Um, exactly. I think it was shot down possibly by the Ukrainians. I can't know for sure, but I would say possibly... There's satellite footage in a whistleblower that, uh, that there's actually, I think, uh, you can see photos of it online. There's so much information online, it really is difficult to know what to believe anymore. I mean, I've seen pictures of bullet uh, holes in the plane, in the, in the debris, suggesting it wasn't a missile that took it down. Mm -hmm. It was, it was uh, you know, and there's reports of two fighter jets, and they're supposed to be identified as Ukrainian. Um, it, it's, it's very impossible to know for sure. But, Russia for a false flag and stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, it does seem like a classic false flag situation to try to pin the blame on uh, Putin and um, they got to try to knock him off and make him look like the next Hitler they, they are definitely trying to do that yeah and whilst I don't particularly like the guy at the yeah, moment he's not an angel you know he's but not, he's, he's not an angel no but at the moment he does seem to have more sense than a lot of world leaders and he seems to be more uh, I would say manly patriotic like something we should have in a president as, uh, as the leader of the free world you know i i think he lived uh many people in russia i my uh, grandma's sister has lived in russia ever since world war ii they got split up and never saw uh, seen each other until 1994 and she talks like pretty decent about how he's paying women to have kids and uh, their TV, the news is very accurate. They talk about the military industrial complex. And I'm wondering, is he just trying to get them on their side? You know what I'm saying? And demonize the Americans too. And I, I didn't even think he's uh, staged like two false flags already too. So he's not an angel, but he's not Barack Obama, who's either does nothing or wants to, I don't know, take uh, Assad out in Syria. Imagine if he did that last summer. Uh, what would uh, be ISIS would be had the whole Middle East. Have you noticed they keep changing their names? I S or I S I S I L. Yeah. I I, I think that's um I think that's a deliberate attempt to confuse people so that they can um you know a lot of people say they were funded and set up by Western powers in the first place. So what a better way to distance it from Western. From, from the fact that Western powers set them up by keep changing their names so that they can't say that it, they ever set that up in the first place. Ding, 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 exactly. The public is too uh, un, uh, ignorant. I guess Wolf of like, they want to be ignorant. They just want to think that they're separate. That, that if you change Al-Qaeda to ISIS, all of a sudden, oh, ISIS didn't do nothing to us. So why, who in their right mind, like President Obama wanted to basically be their air force? Can you justify that in any way to take out Assad? Is Assad that bad of a guy? A lot of these guys are all bad. You know, Saddam... Yeah, but he ruled with an iron fist and, and kept looking... I mean, they had... Uh, churches, streets, it looks like, you know, ever since we came there, it's so uh, that's so, there's nothing there. And I'm not saying he glorifying either one of them, but all I'm saying is I don't think it's a moral thing to be an Air Force or a terrorist, you know. And I'm glad we had veterans out here saying, I'm not Al-Qaeda's Air Force, because they, they knew who they were. And, uh, but the rest of the people, they don't know when you bring up ISIS. They think it's ice cream flavor.
<laughs> yeah, they do, don't they? I really wish that all the world leaders would just get together and kill each other instead of in, <laughs> instead of involving people, other people. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Drink the Kool Aid like them, the one people that thought the the world was ending. I'd love, I'd love. I think that'd be the best thing to ever happen in the history of Earth. Even better than water, <laughs> and we yeah. need water to live, but. I think we need to get rid of these guys to live soon, too. Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know uh, you've been following a lot of things. So, basically, this is from my buddy Seth. Uh, he asked me to pretty much tell you, can you give us your take on the floods in Thailand, the coup, and the persecution of political opposition there? Okay, well, I mean, I was... Um... I was in Thailand, uh, I think it means the, the tsunami, um, some years yeah. back. It was uh, 2004 when there was um, an earthquake which uh, caused that tsunami, which killed like over 200,000 people. Um, I was in uh, Phuket at the time. It was uh, the day, uh, day after Christmas, uh, so 26th of December. And um, I just arrived there literally like four hours before. And... Um, I'd gone to sleep, had a few drinks at the bar before I, I went to sleep and then uh, woke up the next day and I actually did feel a bit, a very, very slight earthquake, um, only a tiny, tiny little earthquake because it was quite, quite a distance away, but um, wow. I went back to sleep anyway, I thought I was imagining things because they don't, you don't tend to get any earthquakes in, in Thailand, um, and then I went down about two o'clock and uh, it was the first time I'd actually seen uh, where I was staying in the daylight because I'd arrived at night. And there was just sand everywhere. Uh, everywhere was just covered in sand. There was motorbikes upside down. And I, I knew something had happened, but I wasn't sure what. And um, then I later found out, you know, the the enormity of the um, the tsunami and how it'd come in. And it'd come up to my hotel. The water had come up to my hotel, but it'd gone away again. And you know, where I was staying um, near Patong Beach, um, there was. You know, down the coastline of, of Thailand, where I was staying, there was an, quite a few thousand killed, and it wow. was um, it was a really shocking start to my what was supposed to be a holiday over there. You know. Yeah, it sounds like a great holiday. What it did teach me was was fate. I mean, the way the, the role fate plays in our life, because I desperately wanted to stay on the beach, actually directly on the beach, in a in you a want beach. The gut feeling. Yeah, I wanted to open the doors in the morning, you know, and, and open them up, and, and the sea to be literally there. And um, it was all booked up. We, we I managed to stay still not far away from the beach, but far away, enough away that it didn't really damage our hotel. It did wipe out the bar. That I, that I had a drink at the night before, but um, it taught me a lot about fate, and you know, thousands of people yeah. got killed, like 200,000 people got killed in that tsunami, and um, you know, I, was, I felt very lucky not to be one of them, really. Yeah, yeah, and, and a lot of people, it's hard to recover from that, you almost have a guilt of living, you know, because it's like, what if I would have just waited, uh, and all those other people died? And someone else walked, you know, why me? Why was a, I suppose, I've seen people like go nuts because they survived like big, uh, like plane crash and not many people did and just they can't cope with life, you know? So that's a, that's a close situation. I, I actually lived in California, but in Chicago, there's an earthquake. I, I don't know if you heard about that. We had an earthquake two years in a row in Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I often hear about earthquakes over in the States, but there seems to be so many of them. Um, yeah, you know, the, I did, I'm not uh, sure about the Chicago one. Here's the, this is a crazy thing. That's why I, I'd like to inform you about this and the listeners also. The New Madrid is bigger than the San Andreas. It actually, it isn't the, in, in like length and how, well, like how many miles and this and that, but the power. In 1812, it last went off, and it reversed the flow of the Mississippi River, was felt all the way to New York, and it literally wiped out everything, because it's like wooden shacks back then, and it's due. And St. Louis is in great danger. I mean, it's like any other volcano that's overdue. You don't know. It could be tomorrow. It could be 100 years, you know? And a lot of people don't realize that, yeah, Living in Chicago in the Midwest, that you do have a threat 
of getting uh, killed by a to uh, tornado. A lot of people don't think that was possible in that. So it's not a very safe place, despite uh, what a lot of people say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if the government don't get it, it's the natural disasters will, won't they? But and you know, there's there's people that say that um, you know, with things like the HARP uh, weather modification system, oh, that, yeah. that that yeah. now um, e the government even control the weather and can can control natural disasters as well. Whether that's true, I don't know. But you know, well, there's some compelling evidence, like the they seen the Indonesian lights. Uh, right above Thailand before uh, the the tsunami hit with no pre like warnings, no tremors. Uh, usually there has to be some kind of when the plate shift, some kind of you know plate tectonics causes movement. You're gonna register. And there's nothing, you know. And how many times are the uh, northern lights gonna be in Indonesia? And that happens to happen when Harp gets put on. Nick Begic did a lot of good work. If anyone's listening. Out there, I think he's written some books. Check out Nick Begich. Yeah, his brother is a congressman in Alaska, and he's been doing a lot of research. That place has mind control capability, and he demonstrated it to the uh, Congress. Uh, uh, here, they didn't want nothing to do with it, but the EU took him in, and he put headphones on their neck. And, uh, and he actually showed Jesse Ventura this, and he could hear it in his head, and he was trying to demonstrate the technology. And it's also been, uh, there's a few other, the Haiti uh, earthquake, they were saying. I mean, a lot of, because the same, same things, they don't follow the regular patterns. That's kind of suspicious. you got to admit that. And we don't know if it's HARP. They could have some even more seeker, because HARP's on TV too. <laughs> you know? That's true, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who knows what technology they've got? We we do live in a, a sci fi age. I think it's it's taking people's mentality a bit of time to catch up with the fact that, you know, all those those movies we watched in the past that were predicting the future, we're in the future now. We're in the two two thousand and fourteen, you know. They've got some crazy technology out there, you know. It's like nineteen eighty four. Yeah. You know? I swear. You're you're damn right on that one, buddy. But uh, yeah, so yeah, you mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, the tsunami and also the revolution. Yeah, I was I was there more recently um, in the last year or so when the revolution was going on over there. And um, what what I did want to say about it was um, it was just a couple of streets away from where I was staying. Although you, there was a lot of people just on holiday, and you know they they had no clue this revolution was going on apart from by looking at the news. You wouldn't know it was going on, but two streets away, there was like a million people uh, who'd taken over a, like a motorway, and they had a big screen up, and I, it was actually a really nice atmosphere. You know, there was people with barbecue stands, um, there was uh, musicians, uh, people were selling t-shirts. It was, it was actually a really peaceful um, demonstration. But what I did notice was it was on um, the mainstream media, all they were shown were photos of people chucking grenades, and uh, they made out this revolution to be very violent. But it, you know, that was that was very unbalanced version of the story because it was actually, you know, there was more. Yeah. There was millions and millions of people actually involved in peaceful overthrow of their government. Yeah, that's the, I, I agree completely. Uh, well, Seth, that he answered your question right there, buddy. Thank you for the question. Uh, how do you feel about the big, you know, news here in, in the states? Uh, the whole uh, St. Louis, well, Mike Brown incident, where the police officers apparently shot and killed an 18 year old, and they've been basically in martial law for the last week. Uh, I mean, does that scare you? They could come first spread out across the seas, or? Or do you just think this is an American problem and we got to deal with it? Uh, I mean, what's your take on that? Well, I've seen lots of uh, cases of police brutality, and, and most of it does seem to be in the states at the moment. We've got a different, we've got a different kind of problem over here, which I'll talk about in a sec. But yeah, I mean, I saw the, um, I saw the video of the, of the father, I think, of one of the relatives going and walking over to try and check the body, and the police were telling him to get back. Yeah, and, and I, I heard the story about this incident, and I'm not surprised because I've I've seen a number of instances. I saw one video recently where there was a guy, a uh, coloured guy, getting out of the car, and um, 
the, the police officer told him to put his hands up, which he did, but he shot him anyway, you know, <laughs> which doesn't seem quite right to me, you know. And, and then I, the, the thing that shocked me most, I think, was the um, the Kelly Thomas um, video. Yeah, uh, that that guy, because that was just horrific. No, I, and uh, I cried when I seen it. I, I didn't cry, but I, w I was very, very uh, moved I, by it. Well, I, I wasn't, like, bawling, but yeah, my teeth, I, I, because I got beat up by police before. Yeah. And I was just wondering, like, that could have been me. So I, I, I literally teared up because I, I felt the pain in a sense. And then they shot another guy in Arizona, a homeless guy. Uh, and all he did was, um, let's see, illegal camping. He was camping in a forest and he got shot down. Yeah, you know what it is? They, they, I noticed with the Kelly Thomas incident, the, the thing that got him killed was just not obeying what they were telling him to do. They just took... At that everything, damn second. Yeah, right? everything was going... Everything was almost going okay. They were insulting yeah. him and stuff, but when, when they told him to get on his knees and he refused to do it, that's what they killed him for. They, they, want, yeah. they, want, bl they want complete obedience, otherwise you're dead, basically. Yeah, exactly. We, uh, we don't realize that here, but the police say they do something, who's going to actually punish them unless it's something like a horrible murder caught in a mall, you know, or something like with a hundred cameras where they can't get them all. The cops are going to get away with everything out here. I'll well, tell you didn't, they, didn't they get away with that one with the Kelly Thomas Yeah, one? yeah. They I mean, did. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, the vi there's a video there, you know, everybody can watch it. It's like over 20 minutes long of... And this guy, you can tell he's a nice guy. He's like a hippie kind of guy, he's you know. He's like for his dad. Yeah, he's like a peaceful, peaceful guy, you know. And he wasn't doing anything, anything wrong, you know. And yeah. um, for them to, the, they they killed him brutally as well, you know. I mean, at least with a bullet, it's quick, you know. But they yeah. they, they they smashed this Holy guy's face you. up completely. You yeah. Know? Did you see the hospital pictures of him? Too? I did. I mean, it was just shocking. They was they smashed him in the face with the uh, the taser gun, broke his nose, and. Uh, Oh, it was just disgusting, you know. Yeah, uh, those guys should get locked away for life, in my opinion. Oh, they should not, and they're still on the force, you yeah, know. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, and, and I, I have a, a guest coming on, William Scott. His son was a West Point grad, a uh, military mind, you know, really high up. And literally, he was in Vegas, had his concealed carry in his pocket. Someone called the police on him. And uh, they came up and shot him in cold blood and just murdered him. He had his, his card in his pocket. So he wasn't breaking the law, didn't do anything. Somebody got scared, seen it, called the police. Now, these guys didn't get held accountable. There's a, they, uh, two white cops that shot one African-American on a train. Uh, and uh, basically, you know, uh, you have underground train systems, right? Of course, so yeah. There, uh, they were there. They confiscated all the film. Basically, what happens? He got a mouth off. There's about ten officers and two guys on the ground caught. He mouthed off. Next, you know, they threw him down and kicked him a couple times. He kind of was like moving, and they shot him right in the back, in the spine, and hit the ground. Went through his heart. Yeah. Right in front of people on the bus who got the vi or on the train who got the video. And and guess what? They didn't get fired. It's crazy. I mean, I, I don't know what, what people can do about it. I, it's just unacceptable, isn't it? I mean, over, yeah. in the, over in the UK, it's not happening in such a way, I would say. But I don't know. I think, like I said to you before we, um, we started the recording today, the, um, things that happen in the US tend to uh, be pre preclude uh, things that then happen over here. And someone said to me that maybe this was a case of people coming back from the military from wars in Afghanistan and Iraq who then who then join the police force and are still quite violent and uh, we don't have so much of a problem with it over here but we, we what we're having over here is where people are getting arrested before they do anything over here oh um, that, Chicago too where I live it's uh where they predict that you can commit a crime so it's to prevent the crime they're going to arrest you before you do anything yeah that's got that's yeah. to happen as well yeah and I'm sure those security cameras that are popping up everywhere around uh, Chicago, at least, and we have 30,000 drones flying in the sky, uh, you know, could solve crime if they really wanted to. But they haven't done nothing yet. The cameras, 
have not caught one person, what are they doing? They're watching us like guinea pigs. They don't care about helping people. You know, that, that, that's the thing. The cops, they need to get their priorities straight. Their job is to serve and protect. And not only the police is the uh, job to serve, it's also the politicians. They're supposed to be serving but, us as well, representing people, but they're not either. Yeah, I mean, they even uh, arrested uh, Washington Post uh, reporter, Huffington Post reporter. Uh, they arrested, I think it was aldermen of the district for taking footage and the other two guys were in a McDonald's. I mean, what crime were they committing? Uh, yeah, and th this is happening over here as well. We had the arrest of uh, Glenn Greenwald's partner um, at Heathrow Airport for really? just, just reporting on the Snowden NSA revelations. I mean, it's unbelievable. And I'm, I'm a Wired I'm, magazine, then? You know, why don't they go, anyone go after them? Yeah, I mean, people are fleeing, you know, Snowden's fleeing to uh, Russia for protection. Okay. Uh, you've got um, Julian Assange is being held in the um, Ecuadorian embassy in London. Um, and, you know, we, 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 £6 million has been spent already keeping that guy uh, holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy because they don't like the information he's releasing to the public, the which that. is the truth. You know, they don't like the truth because it, it's embarrassing for them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and yeah, they'll kill, they'll kill people to keep secrets, you know, like that, without thinking twice. But yeah, no, you're you're dead on with that. I I couldn't agree more. So, uh, I think this is another fan question. Yep, this one is from Pete, and that's not me, but uh, it says, I think again, this uh, no, he goes. Because of the Ferguson, Ferguson situation in St. Louis, have you had any major, you know, protests or anything in England lately? Are the people happy with their lives? Is the, the economy going well? Uh, or are people like in America feel like there's something bad and is going to happen and they're kind of being oppressed a little more? Gaza-Israel protests going on in, the, in London. So that's encouraging. Um, but um, I would say there is a growing movement of um, people in uh, becoming more involved in activism, but it's still very small if you compare it to the population of the country. There's still way too many people over here that trust their leaders. Uh, they, they have, uh, you know, blind, blind trust in authority. There's still too many people like that, in my opinion, over here. I think they would have learned after Adolf Hitler. Yeah, people yeah. don't seem to learn. You know, I, you know, I, I keep sort of trying to talk about things that have happened in the past. You know, like in the U.S. when you had the CIA dragging people off the streets and trying to erase their mind. You know, with the MK Ultra program. Oh yeah. And that, oh, that that's okay. a fact. And and yeah. you know, but people still still trust and uh, believe that that what their leaders are saying tr are true. Despite the fact that they released uh, military footage of a bunch of them getting all messed up off it at the table and then trying to go through the agility drills and they couldn't do nothing. They are walking like so slow like zombies, you know. So they, they'll say they didn't do it but yet release the video and declassify the documents but the public doesn't have the urge to look. And that's what we got to change. Yeah, definitely. People need to be... Uh questioning a lot more i mean the economy is pretty bad over here everyone i know is struggling financially and people are just about keeping their head up above water anyone who's got a job is just about managing to to just about pay the bills but they can't go out and enjoy themselves they've got no time for anything no time to really do a lot of research because they're just they're having to work just to survive you know so the economy yeah. is in a bad in a bad way over here that actually sounds very, how you described it, right? I couldn't have described our economy here in Chicago nationally any better. That's like the same situation, same situation. And yet, uh, whilst this is happening, whilst people are struggling, you'll read the newspapers saying, oh yeah, the economy's fine, you know, it's, it's uh, picking up. But, you know, it's not fine. You know, it might be, it might look good on paper for, for them, but and, and certainly the people in power have nothing to worry about. They're, they're yeah. never going to be starving. They're always going to have a house. They're always going to be able to travel wherever they like. So they don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, good point. And they're above the law. 
They are know? indeed, you know, literally in, in a lot of cases. If you think yeah. of like uh, the royal family over here, they're completely above the law. I, I actually think um, members of the royal family over here could actually kill someone on video and it would, it wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't get prosecuted. That's very likely. I, I mean, I heard there's pretty much overwhelming evidence that Princess uh, Diana, there's uh, something, I forgot exactly what they said, how they did it. But it's pretty, uh, it was a big investigation, uh, investigation. Pretty much what they found was that the guy driving couldn't have uh, possibly did it and that there's a car behind it. And they probably, there's something with, uh, where they think they might have basically taken remote control and drove it off. It's entirely possible. I mean, the technology exists to do that, to remotely control the car. I mean, it, it happened in a tunnel. I mean, yeah. this woman was constantly on camera uh, all the time. The paparazzi were following her. And where's the only way they can kill her? That's in a tunnel. You know, it's, in, it's yeah. incredibly suspicious. And I think anyone who, um, who is it, does have the mentality of questioning facts, most people believe uh, Princess Diana was assassinated. Yeah, and I'm, that's why I always was figured, wow, you guys ought to, you know, in England, know what is going on. At least you think, you know, that she was a, we still can't get people to think Kennedy was assassinated. I mean, it's growing each year, but, the, I mean, people, like you said earlier, are, a, they're scared to, to admit their government isn't holy, blah, 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 and does the, what's best for them. I think um, I think people feel insecure if they if they start to admit that the people who are, who are actually in control of their destinies and their lives are evil people, then uh, it makes them feel very insecure. So it's easier for them to believe that everything's okay. My next question: This is from me. I said I find it almost impossible that a Boeing seven 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 can just vanish. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? without a trace and I had sources send me information that saying that there this was like two weeks before this came out in mainstream news that he said he or she they switch your emails every time I was consistently getting documents uh, I might give you an answer on that and all of a sudden I get this bombshell document right when like five days after that thing was gone before they had any idea terrorism or anything he says the uh, plane went up to a certain altitude and then it dropped. They didn't get their gas mask on. It killed them, you know, and they basically took it to Pakistan, not where they were searching. Maybe that's why they didn't find anything, you know, and it was he said it was going to be used as a troop transport plane. And then ISIS all of a sudden is running around like maniacs everywhere and with uh, high numbers and lots of money. So I, I'm so far, at least that's the only thing I've gotten, and I haven't ever heard back from that guy again. I'm kind of scared of us about his well-being, you know, because he called it Indonesia and Thailand both saw a low-flying plane avoiding radar, and they other uh, the other one saw him on radar and didn't report it. And and they have terrorist groups associated with like with Al Qaeda and uh, Taliban. You never know. You know? Well, there's, um, there's many theories about what happened to MH370. It's extremely unlikely that a plane that size is going to disappear without trace. Someone would have been tracking it. It flew over the, um, the Indian right, Ocean. Right, right. You've, got, you've got Diego Garcia, a US base there, which has some of the most sophisticated technology. Um, it didn't crash in the sea. There would be debris absolutely everywhere. Yeah. There'd be Thanks. life jackets flying out, know, the, uh, yeah, the wings the of the plane, that, that plane, it, yeah. uh, I heard someone say that it could have just all, uh, flown underwater intact. That's Not like a, a million to one, it, it's extremely unlikely. So who knows what's happened to that plane, but it's, it's definitely a cover-up. I think uh, busted up in a million pieces, you would have found uh, someone's like luggage, uh, a piece of, like you said, like all the seats literally are life preserves not one's floating around the ocean not yeah. one not one shirt not one pair of socks not one nothing you know and that's that's what made me think maybe that source was on to something the only thing he said after that was you know i never talked to him after the email he ended saying they might use it against israel 
and load it up with bombs is a suicide mission or hit a uh, target in the U.S. Like they gave it, I'm telling you. It's like, again, with the Fast and Furious and this, uh, it's almost like it was a, um, here, you want a Boeing, Boeing 777? Would that help uh, get a sod out? <laughs> you know? Like, why? Well, I mean, it's just, that's, like I said, the only explanation. I had family members watching my show after that emailing me like, thank you. That's more than we've gotten from anybody. At least it would have been a quick, you know, death, my daughter. And that's that's hard that I have to be the bear, you know. But I mean, at least I provided some answers. And like I said, that the guy was consistently sending me documents, and I have yet to hear from him. I hope he's okay. I really do, because like you said, there should be something in that plane. So you, if if it didn't land in the water, where do you think it went? Well, exactly, yeah. I mean, I, I, when some people say it went to Kandahar, some people say it landed in Diego Garcia. Some people even say it was uh, it's MH17, the plane that crashed in Ukraine. It's the same plane. I mean, yeah, it, it sounds incredible, but um, I don't know. I don't know. But what said uh, when uh, you uh, you know um, uh, Operation Northwoods, correct? Uh, can you remind me of that one? Uh, you gotta look this up. Biggest uh, documented false flag attempt that would end up not happening because Kennedy rejected it. Already uh, back like when as uh, soon as we get the spy plane caught the you know and the Cuban Missile Crisis broke out basically uh, they were going to either nuke them, invade them they couldn't figure out a way to justify it and they didn't want to really pretty much scare the people and, and get into all out like nuclear exchange so they came out this plan, Operation Northwood. I think I have it right here. And what they did was they're talking about remote, uh, taking remote control of airliners, flying them into buildings to blame Cuba to go in and uh, get rid of those missiles. Mm -hmm. Does that sound a little familiar? Oh, it does sound a little bit familiar. <laughs> you know, and and you think they could have found another plan? They almost stuck with the same plan by you know to the T. Because if you look at, uh, I did a lot of research in 9-11, those guys couldn't have made, especially the uh, Pentagon. And there's no wings, and they couldn't have hit that if they tried 10,000 times. No, uh, that's the thing. Explain. I mean, with the Pentagon plane, uh, if you, uh, at first, when I heard about the Pentagon uh, conspiracies about, you know, it, was it a truck instead? I, I just thought, uh, it just doesn't seem like... Um, it doesn't seem very possible to me, but then I, the more I looked into it, the more I realized, yeah, that would have been an imp impossible flight to perform. Uh, airline pilots have said that's um, impossible at that speed to, to pr yeah. perform that maneuver. And uh, No one in a test pilot thing has yet to accomplish it. And no one has provided a video of the plane coming in at all. There's just one it, it, one video available uh, which, like which just shows an explosion, that's all. You yeah. Know? And what? Uh, and they confiscated all the businesses. Ones. Why would they take all of the businesses' cameras? If they're not hiding something. Yeah, you know? the reason they did it was because they it, those video cameras would prove that that plane wasn't flying at the correct altitude. Yeah, and if you look closely on the footage, it almost looks like a, a commercial airliner flies above, and then a jet comes after, like a fighter, almost like. They hit it with a missile, and, and it just so happened where they, the exact spot where it got hit. And no one's ever going to remember this. On September 10th of 2001, Rumsfeld came out and said he can't account for some, like, what, $20 trillion? Yeah, and he's, it, um, it so happened he, to be stored there. He's the same guy that also, when he was questioned about 9-11, um, uh, and someone asked him, what about Building 7? Why did that come down? He said, yeah. um, I, what, what's Building 7? He had no oh, idea yes. what building they were talking about. Yeah, the one you guys took down, like a complete regular uh, demolition that didn't get hit by anything. Yeah. And then the owner said we were going to pull the plug on it. Yeah, come on now. He didn't know about that. You, do you really think he's that stupid or he uh, is just trying to play stupid? I think he's trying to play stupid. I don't think he's that stupid. Hey, yeah. I, you never know with the Bush administration. So that's I, true. That's true. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, I was trying to look up. I'll get to that later with the Northwoods thing. But I, I looked that up. Operation Northwoods. Probably most well-documented false flag in the history of false flags. Yeah, I, I had heard that one. I just didn't um, tie it up with the name. Kind of shot it down, thank God. Yeah. You know? And that's probably another reason they killed them. I think the 9-11 um, incident, I think that that actually started a lot of people started to question and I think the more and more incidents occur the more and more people start to um, question some of the incidents that are happening yeah and that's true in like Malaysian Airlines one airliner two seven seven sevens that had Boeing's they haven't had problems go down in a short period of time one goes missing completely and in one we still don't know who shot down it's incredib like, incredibly suspicious that it's all from the same company. I, yeah. I, I don't think anyone knows for sure what what the connection is for, between those two planes, but there is some connection. Yeah, I've heard, you know, because Northwoods, they talk about, like, uh, having two planes and crashing one and pretending it was in almost the same scenario. So that, that's another crazy thing. I didn't even realize that till you brought it up. But, yeah, no, I, I 9-11... Everything out here, I mean, America is the king of the false flag. I don't know what we can and we can do anything to get away with it. And the people come out here. I mean, the Boston bombing, we, they shut down Boston for two kids. Shot a witness in the head who was unarmed in custody. That's incredibly and, suspicious. Yeah, I remember hearing about that one and just thinking, how, mu how much do they have to do before the, the population as a whole, start to say, this is weird, you know? No, instead they rally around, like, chop his head off. Yeah, like, they deserve it. That kid that had nothing to do with any of that. He was a witness because he knew him, you know? Why does he get a bull in the head? Uh, in the back of the head, went in the interrogation room handcuff. It seems to me that they, uh, they, off they, they seem to be testing the public to see how much they could do, and I honestly think they could, they could get away with it far more. They could just get doing uh, almost anything now. Yeah, look, at Snowden released all that. What did it do? Not a lot, did it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like almost like a lot of people believe this Snowden could even be working for them to slowly drip it out so it don't sound so bad in case someone else got it out right away. I don't, I'm not yeah. sure. I, I, I think he was actually just trying to release this information. I, I do too. I consider him a, a patriot, but there's a lot of people that think he's still, because I guess he admitted he was CIA too, and, as well as in the NSA, and that kind of made people right away jump to, oh, this could be a staged thing to get us used to it, you know? But I think he's a hero. It takes a lot of courage to do what he did, and he's in Russia. He did the smart thing. Everyone else who goes to South America, they send the SEALs in, and they get them like that. <laughs> They're not going into Russia to get in, so Snowden, if you're listening, stay in Russia. <laughs> yeah, and, and come on our shows and give us an interview. Yeah, I'd like to know if the, well, they're spying on us. Okay, We'd like to know, you know. Oh, I'm sure they're but, spying on us, but I'm, I think they're spying on everyone, aren't they? Yeah, that's the sad thing. Is Look at that NSA uh, data center we have in Colorado. It lit on fire one day because there's so much stuff coming in. When's the last time you heard of an American terrorist? That, you know, besides the Boston bombing, and they, those guys had been warned by Russia. Russia warned us about them, saying they were training with radical Islamic terrorists. It's not like they weren't being watched already by the FBI. Why did why they stop? Well, exactly. Um, most of most of these incidents that occur, uh, everyone finds out shortly afterwards that they, you know, the secret service agencies have been in contact with them within a year or two the same in yes. england uh the same in england with in london we had the woolwich uh, beheading of a soldier and uh yes, that, that, so those stop. guys had been contacted a year before by um the secret service agencies over here wow just like too just like with uh the uh, seven seven attacks uh, in uh, on the buses they were running drills or uh, in the train station that's they're right, running yeah. They're running in in uh, Spain. The one they're running drills. Also at the Bo uh, Boston Marathon, running drills. Yeah. You know what, what? I mean, come on. What are the odds? And like 9/11, they're running drills on hijacked planes. 
It makes, you, it makes you want to run away if you ever uh, see a drill yeah. going on. Yeah, exactly. It's like if a, you see a drill how out of a blast radius or something, you know. Yeah, I agree, but that that's like it's like they're so arrogant, you know. They like to rub it in. But, yeah, I, I mean, I haven't done a lot of research on that. I mean, how you guys haven't had many terror attacks out there, and... I heard that the the guy who got blamed actually could have been working for again uh, one of the secret agencies, see an intelligence agency, because he bought a two way ticket and had did all sorts of things a suicide bomber usually doesn't do. So can you enlighten us and you know the people here in America of what happened in your major terror attack? Um, I was actually abroad at the time. I think that's when I was in Thailand, but um. I came back and uh, basically we had the London Underground, uh, there was an explosion that went off there and we had a bus as well. Uh, they, they were supposed to be wearing backpacks. Um, yeah. there was a, it, was, it was similar to 9-11, there was lots of um, questions and it, there was never a proper investigation. You know, there was just a kind of uh, a normal government sort of sanitised um, Investigation like into some foreign commission, yeah, like them all. Yeah, you know? they never really give you, they never really tell you the facts properly. So I, I don't think anyone over here really knows what went on that day. But yeah. basically, it was, it was kind of our 9/11 over here, and it was just a way to, in my opinion, just a way to kind of justify all these, all these extreme measures that we now find ourselves. Um, you know, everything that happens over here, every law that that comes in that most people would have said in the past this is unacceptable people are letting it happen because it's all to protect us from terrorism when we've only had that one one incident really yeah you're right honeybees probably i know honeybees kill more people than terrorists here in the states yeah, each year mosquitoes kill far more people than than uh you know with malaria than what the the terrorism thing and yet when we when we travel these days we're treated like criminals and, yeah. You know, it's it's ridiculous uh, reaction to um, terrorism, which isn't actually really happening. There's, there's, no. I, you know, I mean, I, I constantly get things confiscated at airports now, and uh, yet there's been no instances of uh, any explosions on planes caused by exploding um, Lynx deodorant, you know? Yeah, exactly. I've had, yeah, same thing with me. I, I, I don't fly anymore ever since then. I, they took my cologne, this, that, everything. Like, I'm done with those people. They rape me and then they steal from me. No flying for me, you know. Uh, and I'm right here at O'Hare. But, yeah, honestly, we had, uh, here, it's like, yeah, we had 9-11 and everyone bought into it for a while. But I noticed now, I'd say... 70% of America either believes that Bush knew it was going to happen and he let it or that they directly had a role in it. And that's a positive sign. You know, that's one thing I got to admit. 70% of people believing that they, the truth is not being told about 9-11 is... That's, and with these recent polls, like, I think uh, there's dictators that have a higher approval rating than Obama right now. Well, I must admit, when I first saw Obama, um, when he was going, doing his election campaign, I thought, wow, this guy sounds really exciting. He was good at speaking. Um, he promised mm -hmm. a lot. He promised change. And I, just for a second, I thought, wow, maybe this is going to happen. Maybe there's going to be real change, as he put it, you know. Yeah. But it, yeah. as it turned out, he's one of the biggest liars that I've ever I've ever seen on, on TV. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and how he could sleep at night, I don't know. You know, you're right, he is, because he could keep that straight face. He's got that, you know, just smirk on his face. He's got, he's got a constant smirk, yeah, of, of arrogance. And um, anyone who thinks that this guy is telling the truth, just look just look at um, his trip to Malaysia where, after, when MH370 disappeared. And hmm. he went over there and he was... Uh, he was talking to them and sort of saying that he, you know, he was upset about the whole situation. The next day, he comes back to the U.S. and he's giving an after-dinner speech and he's making jokes uh, about people not being able to make it to their chairs and going missing, just like the the passengers on MH370. I mean, does that sound like someone who cares? Awesome. You know, not really. He's he cracks, he cracks joke after joke. You know, that's an asshole for you. 
Yeah. And I, I'm not afraid. I mean, they, neither are we at protests. I never thought in Chicago there'd be protests against Obama. But what has Obama done to just destroy the way that other countries look at America? Like, how, have you noticed the change, uh, especially in Europe, how they look at America over the last couple of years? Well, I think the NSA spying scandal um i don't think people are happy about that you know it does seem like obama's defending a situation that's undefendable really you know people you well know, merkel you... could be a terrorist you never know merkel you never know well, <laughs> you know i mean uh i don't know i think a lot of people did have positive feelings towards him over in europe uh, first of all but um i think anyone who does question the truth is a uh, extremely against Obama at the moment and um, I mean doesn't he have a questionable past as well I mean yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I started trying to do some research about his history and you know him growing up and it seems very sketchy as to um, oh, Indonesia you, know, you wanted to be the president of uh, the United States or Indonesia but Indonesia made him give up his citizenship like that's a rule and he came here on a foreign uh, uh, exchange student program traveled with like a foreign visa as name is like Barry Serrato or something uh, last week on my show I had Wayne Matz and he's done years and years of investigation on who Obama really is and where he came from check that out mm. uh, yeah it's pretty much he he's not a legal citizen well I mean has anyone um, has anyone actually come forward and said they were taught by him? Because he's supposed to have taught for a number of years at university as well. No um, one knows him. Yeah. No one knows him. That's crazy because I I, I I've been doing uh, in my past jobs. I've been teaching myself, and I know that if I became famous, my students would remember me. They they they, they de you know people remember their yeah. teachers. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that's I'm, not something you forget, you know. I'm a, I was a football coach and I was going to be a student. Yeah, you're damn right. They'd be coming up asking for handouts, you know, like, yeah. So actually, and on top of that, uh, Obama's uh, actually family has CIA connections. You know, they opened up a fake furniture store in Hawaii. They got here in Seattle and it's like all of a sudden trails cold and they're here, but there is never a, a furniture actual store that existed. There's no uh, windows, no door, nothing in it, and no delivery trucks. Yeah. So that's kind of, you know, so I, a lot of people, them down, uh, Wayne Manson went down to the south side of uh, Chicago, and a lot of people said they knew him. He was arrogant. He just came out of nowhere, and they smelled a cop. They smelled, you know, like uh, something bad, like he was working for the FBI or something. And and sure enough, the evidence is mounting on that. Yeah. Well, some people say he was kind of reared, hand reared by the CIA for to fulfill yeah. this role uh, and to perform uh, some kind of agenda. To, yeah. Uh, I think it's on the Georgia Guidestones. Oh, uh, yeah. I was going to ask you what you thought about those Georgia Guidestones. Oh, man, I've seen them with my own eyes, actually. Uh, it's almost more eerie when you see them. Whereabouts are they in Georgia? In the middle of damn nowhere. <laughs> I have family I have family that's uh, about an hour and a half past Atlanta. And it took us an, uh, at least an uh, hour and a half, two hours to get there. I couldn't tell you exactly, you know. But what I can tell you is they have a uh, camera there. Because I guess to stop vandalism and stuff, mm. but it's just an eerie feeling when you got that camera at you and you're reading that we have to keep population, uh, you know, down and all the different languages and it's actually uh, aligns with the stars and things like whoever did that, uh, R.C. Christian, they say. Mm. Uh, I mean, you got to think, why would if you put up such a structure and not make any money off it unless it has some kind of hidden message and the, the reason that a lot of people say is it's one of the safest places in America and this is like the good excuse for it that way if something happened here's a uh, directions on how to restore uh, society BS you know I think it's like what 
these secret societies believe the population level should be at and and what their rules are, you know, and unite. Uh, it's almost like the New World Order, if you think about it. Unite, uh, human, uh, one language, basically. They, I mean, they, it's, they talk about the New World Order and Obamacare will help cut the population down with the death panels. So, I mean, you never know. They, uh, a lot of people speculate Ted Turner could be behind making it. Because he's uh, been on record saying that people, we need to get rid of a lot of people in like South, South America and stuff in Africa because they have too many kids. So you never know. But whoever did, they had a message to get across, you know. And they definitely they... wanted the message to get across. I mean, they, they inscribed it in eight languages, including Babylonian, Classical Greek, yeah, Sanskrit, of, and yeah. Egyptian hieroglyphs. Why would they do that? Now, you know, like, that's the thing that gets me. It almost goes back to the government and their obsession with ancient, like, Egypt and Rome and all that, and Greece and stuff. So, yeah, who would do that? Like, what, do they think they're going to rise from the dead, the Egyptians, to come read it, or what, you know? Well, the fact that it's obviously, they're obviously trying to keep it secret, what it's about, and that, that suggests to me that it's um, done by a secret society. Yeah, yeah, and then a lot of people are saying, too, that, that could have been uh, the Rosicrucians. I don't believe so. I, I really don't. I've, I've done research into it. This R.C. Christian guy, we're never going to find out who he is, but my bet is the Freemasons were behind it, and it was probably a higher degree. Yeah, and they've, they've built these stones so that when they bring about some apocalyptic event to, to bring the population of the Earth down to... 500 million uh, at least those stones will still be standing so they can go and sort of worship at the uh, uh, what they've Probably done what they've stone achieved Henge. new stone right yeah. There. yeah I'm telling you man the, the way that our uh, if I didn't have to stay here because you know my mother's sick I would leave the country I'm that fearful of how things are getting out here I mean ever since uh, I had a question for you myself Bob uh, Ever since they, how long have they actually banned guns outright in, in like England? And is that like most of Europe that does that? And since they did that, has the crime rate gone down or up? Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, ever since um, I've been alive, there hasn't been guns. So I'm not exactly sure the exact date. Um, in some ways, it can be a good thing. But I, I, I certainly wouldn't recommend people in the States giving up their guns at the moment with... Uh, when, yeah. you, when you've got this kind of these kind of governments in charge, I mean, ideally, if we had decent people in 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 our governments, you know, decent people like members of the public, if they were in charge and it was a peaceful world we lived in, none of us would need guns, would we? Because we'd all be living peacefully. But when you've got these kinds of people in charge, I think the I think members of the public do need guns, but we we yeah. haven't had them over here, and they've just started to. Uh, bring back guns for the police because they the idea was over here no guns for the citizens and no guns for the police either but just in the last sort of five years they've started trickling back rearming the police over here yep. which is very suspicious if you ask me yeah oh and, and actually i mean since when who gave that a like authority why should they get those and and they act like they gave it to him no one's given them the authority there's been no public debate about should we rearm our police it's just it's just they're just nowadays they don't care they don't they don't think they need to ask anyone you know oh yeah i, I mean i heard uh on fox uh they were talking to an admiral about the airstrikes and they said after three or was it six weeks congress has to uh basically say yes or no and Obama basically has been bombing, and the admirals are, oh, I can't get in that. And I think it was Shepard Smith on Fox goes, well, you know, the Constitution is the law of the land, and it says that Congress has to vote. And Congress isn't even trying to, you know, so they don't care. So when you have a Congress you, that doesn't care, a president that doesn't care, uh, the judicial branch is all messed up too. I mean, some of the things they've even Supreme Court have voted on are absurd. So the whole system, who do you go to turn to fix it? You yeah. know. And the There's public, no the problem is with the terrorism threat. 
they do get public support as well. I, I think if you went and asked a lot of members of the public, are you, are you happy to see uh, the police armed in the UK now? At airports, they'd be like, yes, I feel much safer against terrorists. So, you know, they're not going to get too much. They're not going to get too many members of the public um, protesting about this. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, that, that one day, you know, September 11, 2001, has basically just justified them, given them the reason to get the oil they wanted and bragged about, uh, establish a foothold in, in the Middle East, uh, put it in chaos so that they could control these people and get the oil extorted out of them for, for cheaper. And we have to take responsibility for what we did to Iraq. And I'm not a big, I'm like an isolationist, but we left that country in turmoil. Now we just can't let these ISIS guys run all over. And, you know, it's, we have to... I mean, he brags, Obama, so much. I was the guy that stopped the war. Well, you really didn't do nothing. You were actually trying to aid the the crazier people, you know? They get a guy that supposedly shot chemical weapons, although footage showed the ISIS shooting the weapons. So are we are his, our foreign policy seems to be like we want to help the terrorists. We want to help the uh, Mexican uh, drug lords so let's give them guns we want you know like tracking come on now you really think they're gonna give guns for tracking like that why weren't they catching them before they didn't bring that up till he got caught eric holder should have been gone that day you know but we don't uh, hold our elected officials accountable uh, is it better in england is it better in europe i mean how uh, in germany anywhere or is everyone kind of just following the united states as lead our leaders over here, I mean, uh, they still have support with the majority of the public. I mean, but there's, more, there's a grow, growing and growing amount of people who are, who are seeing them for what they really are. We have a, a child abuse scandal going on over here oh, yeah, at the I moment. Think, uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that that will have some effect in showing people these people are scumbags, you know. I mean, uh, there's people who have been researching this for years, and if, if these people do get exposed, we'll be... We'll be talking about top government ministers who are going to be exposed as paedophiles. But whether, oh, yeah. but whether they're going to try and cover it up is another is another matter. Yeah, they have that one guy, uh, I forgot his name, who uh, he looks like a pedophile. A lot of and, them look like pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But he wasn't in like the royal family, but he was like doing their dirty work and seducing the kids and bringing them there. And I've... Uh, heard... That's uh, Jimmy Savile, I think you might be talking about. There you go. Thank you. I couldn't think of his name exactly. That guy looks like a complete perv. You could just tell by looking at the guy. I wouldn't be buying, but yeah. Why? I mean, honest to God, they're like you said. They don't get held accountable. I mean, there's proof there. Okay, there's tons of proof. Well, the guy, but, the guy you're talking about, Jimmy Savile. Um, he was a DJ. First of all, he was on TV. He was on the BBC. He was. He was actually running children's programs, you know. He he oh. and um, a lot of people said that the, the story with the, of him, you know, being caught as being a paedophile. It, half of it hasn't come out. I mean, he's supposed to be involved in necrophilia, possibly killing children, but that hasn't uh, reached mainstream news. Cannibalism, you know? yeah. I heard about drinking blood and the rituals and stuff. What Into the hell? Satanism. Yeah, yeah, and so technically, yeah, you're right. I bet you that he gets off on probation or something. Oh no, he actually died. So I mean, they can't really do much Thank with him. God. But Thank but God. now a lot of the people surrounding him are, are being brought down, including politicians, because yeah, it does look like he was a supplier of children, and he happens to be best friends with members of the royal family as well. Family. Yeah, exactly. I, is it? True or is this rumors that they find uh, kids' bodies on the grounds of the royal family's like uh, estate? I, I they, heard they found um, they found the body of an Eastern European woman, um, probably trying to escape from, from some <laughs> kind of Hunger Games uh, uh, event me. there. But um, they it found happens. a woman who was killed there. But um, I don't think it was uh, basically the royal family are untouchable in the UK. You can't. They're like mob. Huh? Yeah, I mean that. Nobody, no, no mainstream media are going to ever, uh, unless things change severely, are ever going to uh, try and pin a story on the royal family. See, that, that's that's why your job's so important, and everyone else out there, and like the guys at Infowars, Paul Joseph Watson, to to 
keep, to be the real press, you know, because I forgot who it was that was giving a speech to Parliament, and he said, you know, this house, is the Commons, you know, you're you're important. I'm proud. But he looked at the media, and th this was in the 18th century, and he said, without you guys watching what we do, you know, keeping us in check, basically uh, holding us accountable. Uh, you know, your role is basically the most important because everyone would, do, you know, abuse their power. Well, that's what's happening now is the media is just uh, taking the script here from the White House and just going with that, you know. And half the time, they actually just lie completely. Uh, it's crazy. And their job here, we call them like they should be the unwritten fourth branch of our government. But... Uh, I guess we wouldn't have jobs. So thank you for letting us have jobs, yeah. not doing errors. Gives us yeah. something to do, doesn't it? I want, I'm well, going to ask you a question, actually. Um, yeah, no problem, Scott. Uh, basically, being in the UK, um, I, I hear a lot about the First and Second Amendment. Um, but I wonder if you'd better explain some of it to um, UK listeners. Oh. Elaborate on the first and the second. Yeah, just to tell us really briefly what it's about and what's happening. Uh, you know why people are are upset about what's going on at the moment in in relation to the first and second amendment. Okay, well, basically, uh, to break this down as easy as possible, the Patriot Act uh, kind of ta uh, took away our Bill of Rights and a lot of uh, our our founding core values in this country so for instance like uh, the protesters in Missouri then Ferguson they were uh, in a street peacefully gathering holding signs and they get attacked shot with bean bags and tear gas at, for practicing what is a first amendment guaranteed right in our country the right to protest or freedom of speech you know and that's almost out the window. Oh, I was going to say that's happening over here as well because um, we've always had the right to protest, the right to a fair trial, um, yeah. but that's gone over here. I mean, uh, uh, I can't remember the actual summit. The uh, Maybe it was the G8, G8 summit that was happening um, over in the UK and um, there was going to be a protest about it. So what the police did, that 50 police, uh, like a SWAT team, went into the centre of London and arrested all the protesters in their houses the day before the G8 summit. I mean, I've never, I'd never heard of anything like that happening before in the UK, but it's now, it's now happening. You can be arrested just for thinking about protesting now. Yeah, yeah. Chicago started that. I couldn't believe my eyes. I read in the paper. Uh, Mayor Manuel says that uh, this prevention of, uh, he has a program to prevent crime and they made it seem like it was the, like the best thing and then on the bottom it says, but since they didn't commit the crime yet, are they really guilty? You know, that, I mean, yeah, that's, how could you, that, that goes against everything we stand for here, you know, and that's why, uh, leading to the Second Amendment, that's why we need a Second Amendment. Uh, like, a lot of people in the media try to say it's for hunting. Well, guess what? When back when George Washington, and we'll go further up into the 1800s, if you didn't hunt, you didn't eat. Mm, okay, yeah, so yeah. that was a necessity. You had to hunt. And it has nothing to do with hunting. It's what, to protect ourselves with the strength of numbers, just like the in Vietnam, you know, they didn't have, uh, they didn't have better equipment, uh, they, but they basically uh, made us use our resources, just uh, got the public opinion down and pulled out, you know. that What they're doing is they're uh, full out attacking the Second Amendment like it's just there to hunt and people, uh, like kids, pick guns up and up killing someone. They forget that it was put there to protect us from tyrants like our government is right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Because strength in numbers, yeah, we don't have rocket launchers and all that. But if everyone had guns and uh, there's a jab, I think in, uh, it's a famous World War II uh, general in the uh, Japan Army, I think, said that we can never have a ground invasion in the United States. They have a gun for every uh, blade of grass. And, and that's another reason that's important because, yeah, it's like kind of like... Uh, 
what is it, uh, Switzerland, right, where they train people, or was it, Swe yeah, Switzerland or Sweden, where they make you train, and they have ammo stocks, and rocket launchers, and you defend your town, that's the way it should be, you know, because any power gets corrupted, and now they, they don't even teach the Constitution anymore, they don't even teach it to the kids, mm. they tell you in terrorist manuals, if you refer to the Constitution, Second Amendment, that you're basically being put on a watch list. I mean, if you're a Ron Paul supporter, if you're a libertarian, a Christian, and then Al Qaeda's listed, the guys who did the attacks, yeah, right, supposedly, you know, yeah. So we are now the terrorists, you know. And I, that's what. That's why you're seeing the influx of the mill, uh, the. I, I call them military cops. They're MPs, you know, like, and with tanks and everything else that's sniper rifles. I mean, that's that's what's going on is the police are no longer police. Their job's not to serve and protect. It's to beat up and intimidate, you know, and that's why we need the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, uh, rights. We need all our Bill of Rights and our entire, I mean, literally the Patriot Act, like, white our history on a like George Bush took the Constitution, wiped his ass, took, flushed it down the toilet, and yeah, there's a loophole out of everything. And, and, and it, all, it all seems to go back to 9 11 because they, they've yep. gotten rid of the, the right to a, uh, a trial. That's that's yep. thrown out the window now. All the rights are being taken away because of terrorism, you know. Yeah, it's like, uh, it reminds me of like Hitler, how he blamed the Russians for uh, burning down the uh, Reichstag, and, and then all of a sudden named himself dictator and put in all the martial law, basically. It reminds me of 9-11 is a similar event, you know? They had to have something to pull, I mean, they, they uh, you really think they're going to get, get away with giving billions of dollars and bailouts to banks that, that give it to their CEOs forever until, you know, people really have had enough, especially with, like, how you were saying and this year, too, the economy just sinking and sinking, and these guys get $50 billion bonuses after going to a recession. I mean, come on, you know, the, the, this country's so backwards. Like, the one thing that would change it for the better is if we just repeal the Patriot Act as a start. I've tried to do it. And there's so many people that stick up for that bill, and I don't know how you can. I really don't, unless you never uh, studied any of the Constitution, which a lot of people unfortunately don't. Yeah, I think the only um, the the positive thing for the future is that if if more and more people stop listening to mainstream media, media switch over to alternative media, stop reading the newspapers. And, and and look for alternative news and or or read read mainstream news but read between the lines and and see what's really going on and if the mentality of enough people change then then we all stand a chance you know yeah. because there's so much there's so many more uh, citizens in the world than there are leaders I mean they're just a small amount of of people that are actually creating a much worse world for us all so yeah. we, can, we can change it. Never mind yeah. Obama saying uh, real change. We can we can have real change ourselves. We gave them yeah. a chance, but they're 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 abusing their authority. Uh, he promised the most transparent administration, and he, he's had the least. You know, I mean that everything he says, just wait for the opposite will happen. You know, like he everything everything and. I, like I said, I supported the guy even after his first term. I said, okay, maybe he didn't have enough time. Now it's like, what's the excuse now, President? You're at Martha, you know, going golf, like when the world's falling apart, and then he's going to come back Sunday, but we have to wait till Sunday to, uh, to hear his announcement? What the hell is this? Like, you know, yeah, you're a president. You should be working on Sunday, and why don't you just stay in Washington in this time of need, not go back on vacation to play golf? That's how out there these people are. I mean, the, we... Our president could easily have been calling, uh, you know, Israel, calling Palestine, trying to work somehow. He did nothing. Just like when I seen at the World Cup game, uh, Merkel, but I told my mom, man, I swear, 
was Obama, I'd be kissing her ass after, you know, the spying on her cell phone. Mm. Sure enough, right after Germany won the World Cup, there's Putin right there shaking Merkel's hand. Now, you, I'm sure you've heard, the Russians and Germans are working together better than they ever have. Now, uh, now what kind of impact does that have on, on not just America, but the world? It's all a big game to them. I mean, another thing you could look at is... Uh... Mandela's funeral with uh, Obama doing a selfie with a few other people, you know. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine going to a funeral, uh, an international funeral, with the world's media looking at you, and it, it's just a big joke, and you're doing a selfie of this on a phone? It's so just, disrespectful. It's, and then they have the fake interpreter. Remember the fake interpreter as well? Like he he just walked up and he wasn't even doing any real hand signs. That's right. That and was that was another odd, very odd event. I mean, what is going on? It's uh, Nelson Mandela. You think they could at least hire the right, you know, person like you said, Obama? But Obama just—he doesn't give a shit about nothing. He doesn't. You know? He do it doesn't appear to. I think he's a, like most of them. He's a complete puppet, and he doesn't—he doesn't care what he says. He's just told to read a certain script, and this is what people have to realize: these people don't really have an awful lot of power. Although, in some ways, they do. If Obama stood up tomorrow and just ignored what he was being uh, told to say he could actually do something, but um, he, I know I think he's he's some kind of mind control victim because he's I've just, heard he's just that. doing exactly as he's told. I think they groom this guy, like you said, to bring in the healthcare system where they can throw fines at people who can't afford to pay pay it because it's not affordable. That's for damn sure. And he was brought in to have the borders open, Cloward and Piven is its a democratic strategy, Rex 84. I mean, they've had these plans for a while. They didn't have the guy to do it. Well, they threw an African American in there thinking the world would be like, wow, America's, you know, taking steps forward and happy and then the stab in the back comes, you know, and he had great speaking ability. But it seems like you said he lost his grip, he couldn't do anything. So who either put so much fear into a president of the United States who's running him, or who actually tells Obama what to do? Who do you think? I think that there's always people in the background who, who are telling all these leaders what to do. They're the ones that are always there when, when presidents and prime ministers and world leaders change. There's people, in the, like there's people in the background sure. that never change. And, and yeah, I do think they belong to secret societies. Um, and then there's like Dick Cheney, who's like his own society too, you know. But yeah, I, I agree. And yeah. the military, the military, the leaders of the military who are always there in the background as well. As well, When the president changes hands, you know, uh, when the leadership changes hands, then this, the military is still there in the background. And the, those powerful leaders... Who basically they're the ones with the weapons, so they're in control. Yeah, they're damn right. They're and then there's a third group, which are the financiers, and they may all well belong to the same group. These military guys and the financiers, they may all belong to the the same secret society. I don't know for sure, but those the ones with the money also are the ones in control. Yeah, yeah, you're damn right. And there's so many different secret societies and degrees and all that. But even the people that are in higher ups and if they're not in like the 33rd uh, degree of Freemasonry they're not privy to much of anything you know so not all Masons are bad people but the higher up you go they literally study Albert Pike's writings and he is talking about Lucifer and this but then they try to say it's the, the light bearer it's a star and they always try to counter you and and I think it was uh, Washington who warned about the Illuminati, and and literally the Illuminati uh, wrote a book. One like I forgot the author's name back in the 1700s. He said the Freemasons would be the best cloak. We could hide out their secret, and we could you know infantry governments and get them to do what we want, like from within. So to your point, yeah, I think the Freemasons do because why would they say that? so openly like that you know back in the 17 late 1700s already i think and, i think um i think it should be illegal for any member of um the government to be part of a secret society and it should yeah. be illegal for any secret society 
to accept a member who's in a position of, of authority over other people uh, in government. I couldn't agree more. And I think that should also be like NATO shouldn't have Barack Obama as a high leader up as he's president of the United States either. I think that's a conflict of interest as well, you know. You're telling me there's no one else they could have elected? So yeah, that's there's some sketchy things and that. I think uh, there's people like Rumsfeld that have been on uh, been on it and then been on Cheney and and Kissinger if you go back, you know, that are a Bilderberg, uh, foreign relations, this, that. Uh, either you do your damn job or go hang out with your friends, okay? You know, either do your job or or go to your meetings. Or yeah, if you meetings. want to belong to one of these secret societies, then, yeah, then go 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 play your games, but you're not allowed to be, um, you know, involved in the government of uh, our countries. Another scary thing out here, I don't know if you have this by you, uh, Scott, but, I, I mean, it's almost hard for me to say, but... We have like literally FEMA camps built everywhere. We have the continuity of government program, which would uh, the ten councils of governors, where we'd have no states anymore. We're in ten re uh, FEMA regions, and with uh, nine uh, people that we didn't vote for that would take control, and like one from Puerto Rico. It's like they have all the plans and effects. The camps built, like what were the who they are, who are they going to throw in, and when, and what's going to trigger it is, is the thing I'm worried about. And the weird thing is all the rich people, the former NSA people, are going to the Ozarks, one of the safest places in the U.S., and buying, like, fortress-like castle-looking houses. And they're, they're openly saying that they are preparing for some, like, doomsday event. You know what? If I if I if I had the money, if I had millions of pounds, <laughs> I'd do exactly the same thing. I'd go and buy oh, myself a fortress uh, with that's... an underground bunker, and I'd invite as many friends and family as I could. Uh, and uh, and it's it always be a nice, uh, you know, man cave. If anything, it's a, uh, but and it's a say it's a good investment if you know should it's the fan, and if not, you got a man cave. Exactly. I guess that's, yeah. I, I guess I never looked at it like that, but. Some of these structures are not houses. I mean, they're they're bigger than the Bill Gates' house, the Huff House, it's called. And uh, he's a former NSA, so he knows something. He knows something. A lot of these guys are. I mean, they they got Cheyenne Mountain. We have rumors here at O'Hare Airport that there's structures underground. There's rumors at Denver, but did you know? In at Denver's airport, it actually says. This capstone was placed by the New World Air Force Commission, or, or Airliners Commission, New World Order Airliners, basically. I'd seen um, and, I'd seen some of the pictures there that look a bit scary, apocalyptic yeah, uh, uh, pictures. Getting stabbed, and the Nazi-looking troops, and like all the different animals and people like crying and dying and stuff. Why do you put that in the airport? Yeah, it's very weird, it's, very weird indeed. But it's almost too weird. Like, if they really were hiding people there, do you really think they'd give them that many clues? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to know why those pictures are up there, and there's, there's certainly some, there seems to be something weird going on. I mean, has anyone tried to actually ask them at the airport why why these pictures are up there? Yeah, and they give um, a BS runaround answer, you know? But, but... They, everyone is more concerned about what's underneath and they take them down to some old baggage like thing that they they made that didn't turn out it got flooded but here's here's the crazy thing is I mean I told you about O'Hare in Chicago they have again like a, that Huff house uh, a fortress on like the top of the mountain they have underground roads they have uh, Probably a mile and a half, two miles, and nothing but white buildings with barbed wire fence pointing in. It, I, I've been chased for taking pictures, videos, I, almost routinely. I go there like once a week. And I'm telling you, like, my, I, I've heard so many things about hair that I'm starting to think, because on Jesse Ventura's show, they went to the one where uh, you might have seen it on TV shows that goes underground and has a swimming pool and stuff. And the guy slipped to Jesse and goes, oh, 
Well, if you were building a metropolitan airport in a big city, you could easily blend this under the ground and no one would ever know. And they assumed Denver. And O'Hare has been uh, 10 years doing construction. And you should see there's barely nothing above ground. So where did all the money go? They even intersected runways that they had to redo. They cut costs so bad. They were running training in the abandoned houses. They ripped down people's houses, took land from other, uh, from what is that ne right next to them, from, from unincorporated, from another suburb. They, they, they just basically took their land. And there's a lot of people that have uh, that work there that claim that there's, you could fit four semi-trucks under there. And Mayor Daly was quoted as saying he wanted to hook up, hook, uh, hook up to this uh, underground highway service that goes all the way from Texas to New York. And that was on record in the Chicago Sun-Times, I think, like 1998. When I read that, I was like shocked. So, I mean, what's underneath our feet here is making people believe that we need to start getting ready for something because they are, you know? And if that's just them trying to make us scared, like, oh, we shouldn't get involved in politics because the world's going to end type something, you know? Or, but in the same sense, why would they be building all these things, you know? That's that's the question. Do you Have you noticed any rise of, like, military drills out by you guys? Any black helicopters? Any urban, like, training? Anything like that? No underground structures built? Um, I, I, the lo a lot of stuff that I hear about seems to be in the U.S., but I mean, we do have. Um, I think they again, we're bringing. They're, they're starting to bring stuff over here, like um, that. We had the we've got the first military drone flying over the U.K. That that happened about six months ago, and they reported it in uh, on the BBC website, and there was no not a flicker from anybody. Nobody cares over here, you know. Yeah, yeah, same here, and we have thirty thousand. I seen one six months before they admitted it, uh, about a block away from my house. I was astonished. It looked like a predator, but it, I, I'm sure it was just a spy drone, you know. But still, it's it was a weird feeling. I was telling everyone they thought I was the biggest liar. All of a sudden, I cut out the article in the paper. I said, "Yeah, I just saw one of the thirty thousand, you know." And they didn't care either. It's like so. And okay, then what's next? Let's arm them. Yeah, you know? well, I mean, they're all uh, some of them. The the military drone is already armed over here, and no, oh, th th uh, there was no there was no investigative reporting about this uh, this drone that's now flying over the UK. Nothing, and I, I think they they test the water. They they put it out in the media, see what the effect it has, and if if nobody complains, they're just like, okay, well, we'll just put more and more uh, military drones flying over the country, uh, and you know they can use them later for whatever their purpose they want to use them for. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So it seems like America is really the epicenter of all this, huh? Well, you know, that's... maybe um, there, there, there probably is stuffing stuff like that happening over here, but we it hasn't been discovered. It hasn't been discovered so much. So maybe you're actually doing a better job over there of discovering these these camps. And uh, I well, heard I heard about all these bullets that are being ordered, and uh, someone well, mentioned I'll about uh, guillotines as well. Yep, there's been reports that they saw them on trucks, martial law signs, uh, but the what you could get from the actual .gov website is, yeah, some like 175, or actually 200 million or billion hollow point uh, bullets. Why hollow point? You can't even use them in warfare. They're banned by the, by the uh, Geneva uh, Code. And you can't even use them, so why would they buy that money? They say target practice. Well, why do you need a hollow point for target practice? And why do you need a pregnant mother and a little kid for target practice? Did you know that? I'd, yeah. heard, I'd heard about target. some of these sort of fake towns they, they, they're using yeah. for uh, target practice and stuff. Yeah. Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, uh, you know, a hero, got detained. They let him in two days in a row. They had uh, churches there. It was eerie. The, the subway was modeled uh, right off of Washington subway. I mean, it, it was eerie. It's like, what, what else could they be training for, you know? 
like he was like when I went to Afghanistan, we trained in similar conditions. This is a small city. Then they found one that was primarily for African Americans. Then they found one for farmers. So are they going for everybody? Or you know, the, we don't know. But the the key is that Obama and a lot of people keep saying it's our fault for him not doing anything. Not the fact that he's just on vacation all the time. It's it's our fault. The people that bitch him. And I'm telling you, he's he sparked this whole thing. Like you said, he I think he's like a closing pitcher in baseball. He came in to finish America, get the last three outs. And I think yeah. that's maybe why you, you, you can see these camps being built and stuff is because, number one, I think the American economy is going to collapse. And I think yeah. it's going to happen over there before it's going to happen here, maybe. And number two, you, you guys are armed. You guys have got the guns. We haven't over here, so it's probably going to be easier for them to to control people when the economy does collapse. But over over in your countries, you're going to need uh, they, they 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 know that they're going to have civil more of a fight. You know, it's going to be a civil war. Yeah, I mean, I guarantee you, if they even just come to confiscate guns, that could trigger a civil war. Let alone try to imprison people in FEMA camps and civilian inmate labor programs and things like that. You know, so the, I'm telling you, I pray every day that that some somebody in 2016 could help this country. But I found out last week, Ted Cruz, one of my hopes, might not even be a citizen himself. <laughs> you know, well, Wayne Madsen said that. So then we have Rand Paul. And I, I like Rand Paul, but he's not his father. You know, I, I, how do you feel about Rand? I've I've heard lots of good things about him, you know, watching the Alex Jones show and stuff like that. But my my personal opinion is, we need to give up the idea that we can just put different people in and um and get, and get some kind of good result. Because the problem is, even if you put if you put a decent person in power in in, in America, they're going to get killed basically, and or they're going to they're they're going to they're going to uh, do some operation where they lose popularity and get chucked out for some reason. They're not going to let a decent person uh, take control because the entire system is has been built uh, so that, that decent people don't get to the top. So I yep. think it's going to be very difficult for a decent person to get there. And I think we need to dismantle the system somehow because the media controls um, elections as well, you know. Oh, they, yeah. Oh. And, you know, and financiers control the elections. So... How are you going to get someone decent in power and actually keep them there? That's the that's the question. How do you know uh, that the the you know how Mitt Romney screwed Ron? Did you hear that? Uh, how Mitt Romney screwed Ron Paul really bad? Uh, he had his buddy call him a uh, fake uh, snowstorm. He worked at the weather at a weather channel. They closed down a district that Paul like would have won. Then. Uh, they had some guys who were dead voting for Romney and another one that was close. And every news outlet would just skip over Ron Paul when he was second behind Romney or sometimes ahead of him. They could go, Romney, and, that, and just ignore Ron Paul. A guy made a video on YouTube about that, and it's appalling. He, I mean, he was like a percentage point behind, and they acted like he was out of the race, you know. And then they keep coming in with the racist papers he supposedly wrote, which he didn't. Uh, 20 years ago, you know, I mean, and if you you look in American Drive, I mean, you see Ron Paul stickers everywhere. You would have think this guy won the president. You would think he was like a dictator and still president. Mm. I mean, they're everywhere. And I've never seen a Mitt Romney sticker. I, I did see Obama, but not much anymore. But I'm still seeing Ron Paul. I think and people are still under the illusion that they actually vote their, their presidents yeah. and prime ministers in. But I don't think that's what, that's what happens. Electronic voting made that even more questionable, you know, because Romney owned a lot of the machines that, that uh, were uh, in a few states that he was real close with uh, Ron Paul, in, and that's all it takes, you know. Yeah, and how do you the way I look at it, it's a bit like um, if you've got a really good product you want to sell. You, you could have someone with the best product, i.e. a decent person who could become president, and you could have someone whose product is awful. But if that person's got all the money and all the backing and, uh, you know, can can do all the advertising for that product and everyone's going to hear about that product um, and the media uh, will will be behind that product, there's no way the good product's going to get chosen, is it? 
Yeah, that's a good point. It really is. Uh, uh, that's actually a major problem in this country too right now, driving everything else down. Well, didn't you uh, didn't you try to get a petition to get Jesse Ventura? Um, oh yeah, I, I was censored like at least thirteen times, but the first one I got it right here actually. Uh, we, I think we had like two thousand four hundred and ninety something signatures, and I just did it. And I had like, or that actually was the second day. The first day I had one signature, and all of a sudden I looked the next day and I had to like double check. It's like I'm like, what, two thousand? And I seen Jesse posted it. So all of a sudden I go to see, and they said it was blocked. They didn't give me a reason. I demanded. I wrote an email demanding one. Then I decided to respond and do another one saying, please do not remove this petition about Jesse Hunter, and they removed it before even one person, before I could sign. So I took a picture of that, and I wrote articles for Infowars.com exposing it. Yeah, I mean, I think it, Jesse Ventura would make a great president if the structure uh, behind him that was changed so that he was able to, to you know, bring about some decent changes. Not, yeah, like, I, a, not like Obama who's just sort of signing off anything he wants but it's, yeah. And it's not actually good things, you know. Jesse seems like someone who's got the, the right idea, you know. Yeah, Jesse cares about the people. I hate people that try to act like he's crazy. He has questions. That's what you know. You're supposed to do. You know, you're if you believe everything you hear, you're uh, you're an idiot. You know, you got to look for stuff yourself because he challenges the official stories. Yeah, he, he, he makes sense. He's a lunatic, but that's what a good politician should do. You know, well, you know, I, I, one thing I saw, um, I, I liked on the internet was uh, when he was on Piers Morgan's show, and uh, <laughs> uh, he he mentioned about this uh, Building Seven that came down, and the BBC were reporting it before it actually happened. Yeah. And uh, Piers Morgan uh, sort of tried to do the same, tried to make him out to be a fool, and and said, "Are you seriously saying that the BBC would do this?" And and then uh, you can you can check the video on the internet. You know, there's I the video there, that, so. Yeah. You know, um, listeners, check that video. Yeah, Building Seven. She says it. Uh, apparently, another uh, uh, building. This one, Building Seven, has just collapsed and it's standing there. And then, like, what, ten, fifteen minutes later, it goes down. Uh, I mean, I, I mean that. How how does that happen? If that's just impossible, you know. So that's a smoking gun. I mean, you, there's so many things. You had cars that were spontaneously combusted, but paper right next to it. I mean, I, I personally think there was something else in play there that day that dustified the towers because the the earth, the, like you know, the Richter scale, it, it basically only accounts for half the, the of each tower. The rest was dustified. Now, what could dustify? It? Well, Let's, I mean, with 9/11. The simple fact is, these people are supposed to represent us. If we want to know, if we want a proper investigation into why it happened, then they should provide it instead of giving us all the and, and answer everyone's questions, because that's what they're there for to answer questions. Exactly. They, they, and in a way, though, they weren't even given the the resources to find any conclusions. That's the sad thing. Is they they were basically given no money. They didn't even get to talk to. The, like the lady April Gallup, who actually came out of the hole of the Pentagon and heard a explosive, not a not a like missile, but a bomb planted in there. They wouldn't talk to her. They wouldn't talk to all sorts of key witnesses. A guy who says he found the black box, they wouldn't wouldn't talk to him. But then he got thrown in jail. <laughs> you know, so I'm telling you, uh, there with 9/11. They all the black boxes are gone, but they have all of their IDs. Yeah, I mean that's just crazy. And the same thing happened recently with the uh, MH17 flight that crashed in Ukraine. That they suddenly found these pristine passports. Um, <laughs> you know, with yeah, everything else they, around was charred, charred remains. You know? They're like stacked in a big pile, right? Yeah. But yeah, I seen that picture. Yeah, that did look like they're all brand, brand new. Like everyone went. Two days before they left and got passports. Yeah, that is that is suspicious. Uh, let's see. I mean, you you want to uh, go for another uh, like ten fifteen? I'll probably have to wrap up in about five, actually, if that's okay. 
All right. Right. Another five minutes, and then I better make a move. All right. Let's see. Uh, you have anything uh, you'd like to ask me? Because I got a couple big ones for you at the end. But... Okay, I was just going to say about, you know, you asked me about uh, how, how people's mentality is changing. What about you? I mean, doing this show that you're doing, have you um, have you got any grasp on how many people are actually um, questioning the truth over there? How big is the truth movement in the USA? We hear about, like, uh, um, those uh, Luke Red Luke, uh, what's his second name again? Stowski. Yeah, Luke Stowski, yeah. We are that's change, and that, that seems yeah. to be a growing movement, isn't it, over there? Yeah, started when he was 17 and scared the system, you know, bad. Uh, yeah, no, I would say that uh, the population is waking up uh, at probably a more rapid pace than ever. I mean, I, I w I'm 27 years old, so... When I, I was in high school and 9-11 happened, and I already said there's no way that we we didn't have fighter jets shooting them. Now, I knew right away, you know, something ain't right. So I was quite, everyone called me, like, unpatriotic, and now we're kind of getting over that gap of, hey, you're a conspiracy, tinfoil hat, tinfoil hat, conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And that's the big step. And, yeah, you're right. That I, I'm proud of this country for taking some steps forward and, I guess when you get trampled on so much, eventually you're going to wake up, and we we have, and the youth is taking charge, i got to admit, because they're not afraid. They're, a lot of people, like, you know, even my father is a great uh, man, God rest his soul, he wouldn't challenge authority, you know. A lot of people are afraid to. I think it's the youth that, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, have the balls to do it, <laughs> you know. Good, good, yeah. Another thing I was going to ask you quickly was um, your opinion on the Bin Laden raid. I mean, I, I thought it was very suspicious when they said, oh, uh, we buried him at sea. Uh, that, to me, that just seemed like the most la yeah. lazy cover-up I've ever heard of, you know? Yeah, and then all the, you know all the guys, uh, you know all the guys that uh, were on the mission got killed. Yeah, you know? yeah, SEAL Team 6, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, they had, like, two helicopters went down with, like, a lot of the people on there. So that isn't saying something, too. I don't know what else. I mean, honest to God, I wasn't there, but I don't think he was. A, I think it was, like, a decoy. I think they set it up to like, give Obama something to campaign on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, our accomplishment. I got Osama. No, you got one of a lookalike, or maybe they paid the guy off to go there. I have no idea. Even though they did crash a helicopter, so you know that they did an operation. Who was in there and who they shot, we'll never know. You know, but what I think is it's fishy, like you said. Too fishy. I would want this guy alive, wouldn't you, and bring him back so the families could, could just stone him to death maybe or, or at least have get to see him try like i have a trial we haven't had a trial for one terrorist no yeah, and that's supposed to give up everything right but not one guy's been trialed bring bin laden he could uh expose so much about the rest of the group absolutely but, and maybe they could kill him like the way they did with benito mussolini in italy they um hung him upside down and let the the crowds just uh, you know rip them yeah, apart yeah exactly something along those lines check out um, Truth is Stranger Than Fiction with Peter Witcher. I appreciate that, Scott. Thank you, man. Uh, anytime. And uh, since you said it, I'm, I'm formally right now welcome. Anytime you want to come on, you're welcome to come on. You know, just let me know. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you with one, one last question. It's, uh, it's, it's a big one. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to see what you have to say. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Basically, since, do you feel that we're in a more dangerous time now than the Cold War? Well, look, the way I look at it, we've got, um, we've got people who are trying to reveal the truth to the public, fleeing to Russia for protection. <laughs> uh, we've got one of the world's um, most secretive, and in some ways, um, some people might describe him as evil, uh, leaders actually being the most appearing to be the more stable and truthful person, and I'm talking about Putin. Putin, yeah. Um, we've got the UK government, government are paying like um, millions of pounds to keep another person who's trying to tell the truth imprisoned in an embassy. 
Uh, we've got the NSA spying on everyone internationally. Uh, in the UK, yeah. we've got child abuse scandals with the uh, top um, ministers of our government. Uh, we've, we've got people who question any facts behind any serious terror events as being branded as conspiracy theorists. Um, yeah. We've got paedophiles everywhere in religious institutions as well. And some of those religious institutions have billions of pounds as well, which could be spent on saving, uh, you know, uh, solving poverty. Planes disappearing out of the sky with uh, hundreds of people on board and other planes being shot down, uh, you know, uh, for me, we're in serious trouble. I, th you yeah. know, we're, I, you could go on with lists and lists of things that are uh, the problems in the world at the moment, and they're a whole lot different and worse than um, the Cold War period, if you ask me. Do you think there could it could turn into a hot war? I That's think I think World War Three is looming unless unless people stand up and do something. If everyone just lets this happen then I think World War Three is going to happen because that's what they want, in my opinion. I think yeah, all these world leaders right. want World War Three because there's a lot of money in it and there's a lot of yep. other things. Other, you know, it, might, it might be more than just money. I, I'm not even sure because... Population uh, control, like we were talking about. Population earlier. control, maybe, but I think, you know, maybe they're going to use viruses for that. But um, I think if we, we can stop it, if enough people actually do something, but... If, if you know, if it just stays with the amount of people at the moment, like I'm talking about the UK, there's just not enough people who are who are rising up against this. The closer we come to like a world war, I think that's something that they're going to find harder to get away with because I think the majority of people uh, they may not agree with conspiracies or they may not question the truth, but they still don't. They still want to live in a world of peace and they don't want war and. That may be the time when everyone can rise up and say that that's enough. They're not going to stand for it, you know. Yeah, I mean that the plan, the Biden conquer, has been playing us off for how hundreds, thousands of years. We got to get over it and look at the oppressors, the governments, and like you said, clean them up. Whether it's another couple parties, whether it's you know out here, and uh, whether it's just little changes like. Patriot Act being uh, taken, uh, like, yeah, corporations or people out here, like, they can uh, donate just as much to Obama as me, and, and the Supreme Court ruled that. So technically now that we're a fascist, we're the fascist uh, states of America. And we need to turn those two things around, and I think we could head in the right direction. So I'm optimistic about it as well. And if you keep doing your work, I keep doing mine, Alex Jones, everybody. I think we're going to get this thing turned around. I, well, really I, I hope so too. And um, if people want to find your show, how should they find it? Uh, you can find it on YouTube and type in uh, The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction with Pete. Uh, my last name is W-I-C-H-E-R-T. So that's a Truth is Stranger Than Fiction with Pete Wicker. And I also have a Facebook page for the show, which we update like news to every day that you won't find on any other, you know, especially in America, news outlet. And uh, the show is on every Saturday at 6.30. You could actually watch it live on YouTube. It's a live event. So if you want to uh, call in and, and listen in, it's 773-657-3341. And th uh, thanks for, uh, you know, that opportunity to talk to you, Scott. Uh, it was uh, an honor and a privilege. Yeah, thanks very much, Pete. I uh, hope we chat again at some point. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got, uh, I got your number. We'll be in contact, buddy. I promise, okay? Okay, brilliant, brilliant. All right, then, well, thanks, Pete, and catch you later, yeah? Yeah, thank you for coming on. Thanks a lot. Great to talk to Pete. Um, we'll be linking up with him again soon, possibly from the Ukraine. Uh, remember, just go on to uh, YouTube and type in The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction or just Pete Wicker, spell um, W-I-C-H-E-R-T. We're just going to check in with our academic researcher, formerly from the University of Bilkin, and now conducting uh, further research from the AGU State University in Kayseri, east of Cappadocia, in the shadow of the Urgies volcano. It's a bit of a mouthful, um, I'll have to learn that off by heart. 
next week uh, we're going to be talking to him so we're just going to have a say a quick hello to him now though and find out what we're going to be talking about hello anthony hi how are you yeah good thanks good thanks um welcome back to truth sentinel oh thank you very much i know it's only you're only staying with us very uh, shortly today but i just wanted to ask um you're coming on next episode what will you be talking about yeah i want to talk to you a little bit about uh the positive thinking movement uh, especially in, in the US, but, but worldwide, really, and some of the uh, effects that has had on uh, business and other realms there. Uh, it's, um, it's been quite a disturbing influence, uh, and I think it's something which a lot of people don't realize, just how profoundly it has permeated the culture and what kind of effects uh, it has had there. So uh, I'm hoping to talk about that with you for a while in the next yeah, episode. I, I think we're going to have our first sort of mini debate about that. I'm going to try and argue on the side that um, positive thinking in general is a, is a good thing. Uh, I'm going to set up a poll online so that people can vote at the end of, uh, of the show. Great. Okay, well, thank you very much and um, I'll, we'll see you next weekend. Okay, I'll see you then. Thanks, Scott. Okay, see you. Bye. Bye. Remember, blind belief in authority is the greatest enemy of truth. Or you could say the greatest enemy of truth is blind belief in authority. I don't think it really matters, but uh, Albert Einstein said it anyway. Um, it's on the back of our Truth Sentinel t-shirts. Um, they've, they've actually arrived now, so we've got them here. Um, you can get one if you um, add a donation to our donations button, which is on the About section of the YouTube channel in the top right corner the same place where the uh, voicemail is um, feel free to support us we really do appreciate it anyone who donates over 30 30 pounds or more uh, even if it's not all at once you can do it in stages and then send me an email and uh, with your address and your size of your t-shirt and um, we'll send you a t-shirt uh, or smaller donations are really welcome they all add up and um, you'll get a mention on the show as well just for smaller donations Basically, you can find pictures of the t-shirts on um, Twitter. You'll find a tr a pictures of the Truth Sentinel t-shirts there. And I'll probably put, put some up again on this episode so you can see them. I wore one into town today and I could see people reading the back. Uh, the front is just the Truth Sentinel like on the back is uh, is the Einstein quote. And it does make you, it do, is nice. There's something nice about letting people know what you think and... um. I think at some point as well it'll be a good way of meeting people because when people read that on your back they'll know that you don't support the government basically which is good or bad or whichever way uh, however you prefer to look at it but personally I want people to know um, by the way if you do make a donation and for any reason you don't want your name mentioned please just let me know um, by email this week's thanks goes to Phil G thanks uh, so much for your contribution Phil We've got lots of um, interesting topics coming up and um, hopefully interesting guests as well. If you are um, knowledgeable about a particular topic, then please um, email us scottsentinel9 at gmail.com. So just repeat that, scottsentinel9 at gmail.com. And um, just let me know what you can come and talk about and we'll set it up. If you're a listener, you just want to come and say hello, leave a voicemail on the... Um, top right of the YouTube channel or just send me a mail and you can if you want to come on and speak a bit longer topics coming up in future episodes will be ones that you suggest or things like gun control uh, Monsanto health food etc I'm sure there's some people listening who could come and talk about that so please get in touch the Bohemian Grove time travel Dyatlov Pass Mothman we've already talked a bit about Mothman actually um, protocols of Zion new world order chemtrails fluoride pyramids area 51 hitler's escape after the war some people say that he didn't actually shoot himself history has been re rewritten uh, the carlisle group laser weapons um, there's all kinds of things we can talk about uh, philadelphia experiments skull and bones the vatican um, positive thinking which we'll be talking about soon parallel universes the Illuminata, of course, education, mind control, man-made diseases, holographic universe, simulated universes, philosophers, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, Noah's Ark, 
serial killers and voices aliens amongst us um, the list goes on other shows that i tend to listen to are hagman and hagman uh, freeman fly mark cocking john gary david ike pete wicker truth is stranger than fiction who we uh, we spoke to just a moment ago if you feel like you could sponsor this channel or advertise with some some product that's related to truth then please contact us could be a book show ethical product etc and uh Hope everyone has a great week. Thanks again for listening. Um, catch you later. Goodbye. Before we continue, just wanted to talk about a few new features we've added. Uh, voicemail, quite important uh, feature. Uh, voicemail to leave your comments and I can take your mp3 file that you create with your voice and then put it in the show so we've got like a uh, phone in section basically now let me explain where you can find it if you go on to the channel page so go to truth sentinel channel page where the um, the web links are in the top right corner you'll see the donations button thank you for any donations you'll also see um, uh, blogger but, uh, button um, if you click on that it'll take you to another page where there's voicemail a chat room I really would ask um, for you to use this because it'd be great to hear back from you what you think not just me chatting all the time but and not just our guest but you we want I want to hear what you think so if you can just hit the pause button for a second and go and find that so you know where it is I'd love to hear your comments you only have um one and a half minutes at the moment because that's free for me at the moment with one and a half minute comment. But you'd be surprised how much you can say in one and a half minutes. I'm going to try and lengthen it later if people use it. So um, yeah, if you can, pause, press the pause button, go and have a look, make sure you know where that is. Also put comments in the chat room in there that I've created. Uh, comments about what we've said, comments, uh, questions, things you want us to talk about. It'd be love to have more interaction. You could, you know, tell us topics you want covered, um, what you think of any debates we have. We're going to have a debate next week about positive thinking. Anyway, just to let you know um, the, the address of that page where you can uh, leave your voicemail, just in case that helps you, truthsentinel9.blogspot.co.uk. That's truthsentinel9.blogspot.co.uk. That's also a place where our past guests can keep in contact with us as well. If they want to come back on the show because they've got some news to tell us, they can also leave messages on there if any of you guests, past guests are listening to. Last episode, we talked with Rosemary Ellen Gulley about uh, dreams, the afterlife, angels, miracles. Today, we're going to have um, excerpts from a live link up we did with Pete Wicker from the show Truth is Stranger Than Fiction based in the USA. I think Chicago, actually. Um, they, they have some great guests there. And um, like uh, Pete says in the recording that I'll be playing uh, shortly, we're not competing against each other because what's more important is the message that we're trying to help spread. And um, I think we can all do that. Basically, um, so we're gonna, we had a link up with Pete and we talk about lots of uh, past world events and just discuss them, basically. I'll give you a bit of background about some of the stuff we talked about. Um, originally, it was going to be Pete interviewing me about the current state of world events and linking them to my travels and life experiences, which I mentioned in earlier episodes. But uh, just a, a reminder to uh, listeners who may have joined more recently, Part of the reason I started doing um, the show was I was often caught up in world events as I travelled around the world. I was in Phuket, Thailand for the Asian tsunami that killed over 230,000 people. I arrived literally hours before that tsunami came in and I was, I was right near uh, the beach. Fortunately, the water only came up to my hotel, but the bar I was in the night before got wiped out. Um, I used to live in Fukushima for a number of years as well in the Fukushima region and at some point we'll definitely get someone on to talk about that that um, tsunami there which killed almost 20,000 people and caused a meltdown of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant and you know it seems like there may have been a cover up with that as to how exactly how nobody really knows what's going on uh, it's chaos and confusion and um, 
I think the next stage is probably a major terrorist attack in the West, which is going to happen. Everyone knows it. Um, nobody trusts our government anymore to protect us. The laws they're bringing in aren't really to protect us. They're to suffocate us and to take away our rights. Anyway, let's just sit back and see what happens. Um, next up for execution is a Briton. Um, and I heard a radio presenter saying that what more proof do we need? We need to get in there and attack them. Which might, may be the case, but isn't it all rather strange that we're all reacting to the death of one person when this kind of thing happens all the time? It's a publicity stunt, which, which does make people suspicious. When it's a publicity stunt to get people to go to war, you have to question who's behind the publicity stunt. The other thing I find strange is the fact that a Briton's up next. So, okay, well, if they kill a Briton, we're definitely going to war. It just seems crazy to me. So a single case of someone of our nationality would take us into a war. Someone else's nationality doesn't matter. It's all, it's all stupid. Uh, it's like someone from our team. It's that team mentality. I've always found the allegiance to countries a bit strange for me, honestly, especially when it comes to people's protection of it. In its most dangerous form of nationalism, it can create wars, feelings of hatred and racism. Um, xenophobia against people from other countries or teams. Rwanda is an example. You had case of people being lined up on a football pitch, ironically, since we're talking about sport, and they just gunned them down row after row uh, because they didn't belong to the right team. Let's move on. Ukrainian pro-Russian rebels in the east have signed a truce, uh, as I mentioned, to end almost five months of fighting. They agreed to stop firing um, by three o'clock and it appears to be holding. But the rebels said the truce hasn't changed their policy of advocating splitting from Ukraine, which doesn't sound too promising. Meanwhile, NATO has agreed to form a multinational force capable of deploying within 48 hours. Great, well done NATO, that should really help uh, smooth things over. Also in the week, um, Asha King's uh, parents have been released after being arrested after trying to seek medical treatment abroad, which is now a major sin. If you want to look after your son and daughter and you want you actually choose uh, a treatment that's different to the government sanctioned treatment, then you're a criminal. Um, the government are basically showed in this case they consider people's children theirs and um, and what they often do is they'll take away the child from this family that are, are dare to try something different and they put them into social services. Social services which has has much higher cases of child abuse than if in just living in normal families with their, their parents, which is where most children should be. I mean, these people were clearly, clearly cared about their, their uh, son. It should, this should never have happened. Another thing Cameron mentioned in his, uh, Prime Minister's questions, which I, I found hilarious, if it wasn't so sick, was that he was suggesting that ministers would be looking into the cases of another child abuse scandal in the UK, uh, in Rotherham, and they would be, uh, he would be getting his ministers to conduct a full investigation. Okay, will you, will you be using um, the same ministers that are under investigation for child abuse? It's getting crazy. They need to have a full investigation of the ministers about child abuse. Nobody trusts them anymore. I mean, they have brought in this woman, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, but she's clearly going to be looking after the interests of Parliament there. Hello, welcome to Truth Sentinel, watching over the truth in the news. Today's date is the 5th of September 2014. Welcome, thanks for your support. Currently still in Southampton, hope to be heading to Ukraine in about 10 days or so. Today's news. Lord Mayor of London Fiona Wolfe has replaced Lady Butler Sloss as head of the UK government inquiry into child abuse. Now, she's a city lawyer and former president of the Law Society. She has no um, prior experience of anything to do with child abuse, and she's pretty much part of the establishment. It also seems she may have Masonic links as well. And 
she's on the same um, one of the same institutions that Leon Britton uh, allegedly someone who may be one of the perpetrators uh, of the child abuse that's been under investigation um, so that's a bit weird but um, let's give it all a chance and see what happens but it looks to me like they're desperately trying to cover it up um, but like I said to someone recently only if the public let them get away with it you know we've got to make sure that as many people as possible know about the people involved and don't let them get away with it an estimated one trillion dollars that's 600 billion pounds a year is being taken out of poor countries and millions of lives are lost because of corruption according to campaigners this is a report by the anti-poverty organization one which says that um, a lot of the progress made over the last 20 years in tackling poverty has been uh, put at risk by corruption and crime and it's suggesting basically that people die because all the money doesn't get to the governments and so they can't invest in society it's nice uh, where they're coming from but really I mean that really does assume that governments are not the worst perpetrators of corruption which of course they are people have got to stop thinking the people in power are decent human beings I mean it's, be it's beyond a joke now you know President Barack Obama has vowed that the US will not be intimidated after Islamic State militants released a video showing the beheading of um, American journalist Stephen Sotlov and uh, Mr Obama warned our reach is long and justice will be served I mean I, I love how they use phrases which they think are poetic rather than just saying what they think this is the major problem with politicians they just someone writes their lines for them they read them out uh, it's just why can't they just be human and say what they think and say it from the heart people might like them a bit better but the fact that they just come out with all this crap all the time this fake rubbish you know it's just nonsense occasionally I've seen in some political discussion you get someone who just starts talk, talking normally like a normal human being and they just stand out and actually people start listening to them um, everything most politicians say are just scripted sound bites written by other people and I can imagine they get kind of briefed on statements that have been released so they know what they've actually said in the past for example like they might say someone might say you said that you were appalled and alarmed at the death of James Foley just to remind you, you know I think um, if we ever are going to change society we need to change uh, the way politics works completely the whole system the way politics works the way media works and the way and get rid of this soundbite culture anyway uh, let me continue the UK Prime Minister hinted at laws targeting anyone who does not promote cohesion in society this is after the beheading um, it's quite clear they're going to be bringing in laws which are supposed to tackle terrorists but um, Cameron was quite clear he said not just terrorists he's saying anyone who doesn't promote cohesion in society um, so I, I'm expecting laws coming in soon where everyone has to be careful what they say or they'll be labeled an extremist it's not it's really not far away another thing I noticed was um, army recruitment ads, ads on the TV um, when when you start seeing recruitment ads on the TV, which I, I you know I don't often see otherwise, you know that they're at, they're planning a war basically. Uh, they know it's going to happen. Uh, they want it to happen. They want to make money. They want to have contracts. They want the rebuilding afterwards. All the money they can make. Um, it's all just following a script to um, to help achieve their agenda. So. Um, this ceasefire that we um, we also heard of today in Ukraine I'd like to be optimistic I really would and I'm hoping that it will hold because I'm going to Ukraine soon but I don't think uh, actually it seems like Putin uh, really does want to avoid this war but I think the West has already made up its mind I'm sure they'll if they have to they'll create uh, some kind of false flag uh, attempt and I noticed also again that they keep using this interchangeable ISIS, ISIL, IS 
um, just to confuse the situation. Basically also the UK said it's not going to waver in its aim to defeat terrorism. David Cameron's full of all these sound bites and this rubbish, um, so I, I can't take him very seriously anymore. He uses a word actually quite a lot. Uh, he, it seems to be his favourite word. Um, and the word is robust. He says it all the time about everything. Um, you know, if, if it's something that he could possibly use that word, he'll use it. Okay, so basically at Prime Minister Questions, Mr Cameron told MPs that this country will never give in to terrorism and our opposition to ISIL will continue at home and abroad. I mean, ISIS is a threat. I mean, I think there's going to be some terrorist incidents in the UK. It's, uh, I mean, in some ways, why would some of these people travel abroad to Iraq if they really do hate the West so much? They can just cause havoc here. And it's only a matter of time. They know it. Our leaders know it. We know it. Um, I just hope that it could be stopped. I like to be optimistic. And uh, next week we'll be talking about optimism and, and positive thinking. But anyway, let's move on. There's been talk of uh, getting together with Syrian leader Assad. And that just reveals how stupid these people really are. I mean, if we cast our minds back to when they were trying to get us all to fight Assad in Syria... They were t talking about arming and funding the rebels there, the ones that were cutting people's heads off there, ripping their hearts out. And in fact, they did arm and fund them. Al-Qaeda and most of these uh, groups are only groups together in ide ideology more than anything else. So they were effectively switching sides and asking us to fight with Al-Qaeda against Assad. People said no, people saw through it. But some of these groups of these rebels um, with the same ideology and who were funded by the West, moved to Iraq and became ISIS, and now Western powers are thinking they could side with Assad now and fight ex effectively the same people. Um, this is why we're in this confusing mess. We're being lied to all the time how much pollution that's caused and is still causing. Some scientists have warned that if another large earthquake or event causes the pool of, of the build-up of radioactive water there to drain, uh, the one that's keeping the fuel rods from overheating and igniting, it could cause a catastrophic fire, releasing 10 times more cesium-137 than was released at Chernobyl. Just a quick hello to some of the people um, that listen to this show from different countries. You know, we've got people from the UK, Australia, Canada, Italy, Japan, Netherlands, Germany, New Zealand, uh, Ireland, Switzerland, Malaysia, Norway, Cyprus, Philippines, Czech Republic, Argentina, Taiwan, France, Bahamas, Mexico, Turkey. Bosnia and Herzegovina, Portugal, Costa Rica, Croatia, Ukraine, Belgium, Slovenia and Kenya. Now that person from Kenya did only listen for nine seconds before switching off. But then if I if I was in Kenya, I'd probably be out enjoying the amazing nature over there anyway, so I don't blame them. If you're from another country that I didn't mention, please go to the chat room, let us know. We'd love to know um, about, you know, where people are listening from. Anyway, let's go to the chat um, me and Pete had. Pete from The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. Another show there in the in the states. Let's go and um, I'll play the recording now. Let us know what you think about some of the topics we mentioned because we cover quite a lot. You know, if if while you're listening, you you have a thought about what you think about something, just pause the uh, audio and go and write something in the chat room or leave me a voicemail message. Okay, here it is. Welcome to a special Saturday morning broadcast of the truth is stranger than fiction with uh, me pete wickard and my special guest scott send uh, how's it going scott hi pete yeah everything's fine over here the sun's out uh, over here in england i'm uh yeah it's cold here in chicago 59 other it's like what 59 degrees was it october <laughs> oh yeah so we've uh, we've had some up and down weather but yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, first, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show. And uh, honest to God, I, I really appreciate your help and helping support me. And especially from all the way out there in England, and it means the world to me that, you know, my, my efforts are reaching as far as they are, and yours as well. And that's what's so important about uh, the message of basically sharing, you know, uh, we're not trying to compete like the major news outlets. We share information, and that's the way it should be. 
you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, like you said, we're, we're not trying to make money. We're not trying to become famous. We're just we're trying we're trying to do something again about what's happening in the world. And the more of us there are, and the more we can get together, the be the better things are going to be. Yeah, it's like uh, V for Vendetta. At the end of the movie, I think one day, our at least here in the United States, it's going to come down to that. It really is. And and will an American soldier shoot? And uh, I'm going to ask you that question. Would, uh, do you think an American or British soldier would shoot a civilian of their own kind? Like an American shoot an American or would a British shoot a British soldier? I think a certain type of person um, would do that, yes. I mean, I don't think it would be impossible to find a, a soldier that would do that. But it's kind of a random question. Sorry. Yeah, it, no, no, it's fine. The random questions are good. I think you, I'll, I'll ask you some random questions hey. later. <laughs> <laughs> you owe at least one so far, man. But uh, yeah, no. Again, thanks for coming on. You know, like, and uh, I mean, where do we begin in the world? I'd say I'm interested in your take on Ukraine because a couple of weeks ago I predicted that I I, I think uh, Ukraine had something to do with that plane, the, the Malaysian plane that got shot down, and that Russia and Putin didn't have much to gain, you know, and neither did the, the rebel 